Tick tock, time to rock. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon to everyone who's watching all around the world. Sam. You. How many times now? How many opportunities have we given Muslims to show us one single yeah. solitary verse of the Quran, which is affirming the corruption of our scriptures? How many times have we given them? Hmm. In the past week, now we did the response at not yesterday, we did one before that, and then we did one to Mufassil, and then you put out your challenge. So it's been over one week, and if Adnan rep is representative of the best that Islam has, we've given them ample opportunity, and they've been failing miserably. All glory to Jesus Christ, all glory to the triune God who lives, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be glorified in Jesus' name. Come on now. And we've been, we've been, we've been covering this topic for years. Oh, yeah. I mean, you've got how many? I mean, a ton of articles on this topic. Um, yeah, we've put this in videos. This has been all over the place. We used to talk about this yeah. all the time on our show, Jesus or Muhammad. All over the place, all over the place. So they know it's an issue. They know we like to bring it up. And finally, after years, after years of us saying you guys can't do it, I say, all right, guys. Let me flip your reasoning on you. You demand an unequivocal verse. Just give us one, one, one. And the yeah. the the odds are I will convert to Islam, right? That's that's the wager. Go ahead and show me I will convert to Islam, and they still can't do it. Not only can they not do it, they can't even come. They can't even come close. They haven't given us a single verse that so much as hints that the gospel has been corrupted. They're applying all kinds of nonsense and. Uh, doing all kinds of backflips, showing us not only their view of the gospel, not only their view of the Torah, but also their view of the Quran. I keep telling them, they, they, they act like Allah is a dog on a leash that's only allowed to speak when they say speak. I say, yeah, good, good yeah, yeah. I say that it's like, a, it's like they've got Allah in a, in a torture chamber, right? I, I, saw, I saw someone who said, uh, he, was a former, he was a former interrogator. He said, uh, he, he said, you give me an hour in a room with anyone, and I'm allowed to waterboard them. I will get them. I will get them to confess to killing John F. Kennedy. Yeah, that's true. But by, by the way, true. by the, by the way, that's the uh, that's the main argument against stuff like like waterboarding, right? If someone has information, if you got if you got someone who knows where a, where a bomb is at, and 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 you want that information, you can waterboard them into telling you. But the idea is, you can also get people to waterboard into confessing anything, right? They'll they'll that's they'll say problem. anything, and then you get them to confess, and so. It's a, it's a messed up situation, but that's how Muslims treat Allah. They treat him like they've got him in a torture chamber and they're waterboarding him. Shut up! Say the Bible's been corrupted! Say it! Oh, oh, oh. Say it! Come on! Gosh, M Muslims, you're giving me ideas for a video here. <laughs> you're giving me ideas for a video where someone's a, a non-Rashid waterboards Allah. Oh boy, who's going to play Allah? I might have to play Allah in that video. Yeah. Um, well, you want to be careful with it because then they're going to use that as an excuse not to even engage your claims. Look, he's he's Islamophobic, Muslim, and his messenger. You know, so we are, don't waste our are time. They, are they going to use that, Sam? The guy who of made Islamicize me, the guy who made Muhammad's boom boom room. All of a sudden, they're going to these guys who can't stop making videos up. There's new videos coming out about me every day attacking me. These guys can't stay away. And besides, uh, exactly. it, it's been my experience, Sam. It's been my experience. They get way, way, way more upset if you make fun of Muhammad than they do about Allah. You make fun yeah. of Allah, they're like, oh, who cares? We we don't respect him anyway. You see what you see how we treat his word. Um, but you say something about Muhammad, someone's got to die. Someone's got to die. It's, it's religion. Mm -hmm. of, you may not know this, Sam, but this is a religion that is drowning in idolatry. 100%. No, We've done discussions on that, too. No religion yeah. in history, no religion in history has spread more idolatry than yes. Islam. None. Yes. Like At least we admit, we admit Jesus is God who became flesh. Mm -hmm. He's the God-man worthy of worship. But they say Muhammad is a man. But Islam is actually the religion of submitting to an imperfect, immoral, <clears throat> wicked human being, elevating him to the status of deity named Muhammad. Yep, that's a religion. And now, any Muslim wants to debate us on that, anytime, any place, by the grace of Jesus Christ, we'll prove that. Mm -hmm. You are Muhammadans. I know you don't like the term, but that's what you are. You are Muhammadans. An apt description. Yep. No, no, no two ways about it. Yep. All right, well, Sam, uh, I mean, unless we just, unless they post more videos, which they probably will, um, I was thinking we would sort of wrap up this thread 
by going through some of the some of the common verses. Um, I just I went through the comment section, took screenshots of the first several that I saw that we're talking about. They're, they're using the standard verses, and they're saying yeah. things like, "Are you ready to convert now, David? Here's a verse." And they they just no matter what I do, they they did not take the warning at all. I I told them, guys, read it. Make sure it's talking about the gospel. Make sure it's talking about the corruption of the text. They completely ignore it, and they just post the stuff that they Googled. It's, uh, <laughs> and, and then, I mean, it's just amazing that they say, that after all that, they say, ha, ah, you ready to convert now? It's like, what would I be converting to? Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'd be converting to a religion that, that means that I will never be able to read words off a page again and make sense of them? Because that's what you're telling me. Every last person who's saying, here's a verse that has nothing to do with the corruption of the gospel, but we're just going to say that it's about the corruption of the gospel. I don't even know why they try to go to specific verses, right? I mean, if they're going, to, if they're, if, if they go to a verse like 378, we'll be looking at that in a moment. They, if they go to a verse like chapter three, verse 78, which says that people distort it with their mouths and they say, this means textual corruption of the gospel. If they're going to say that, you could point to any verse that's about anything. You could point to any verse that is about anything and say, yep, that is about the corruption of the gospel. So basically yeah. what they're telling me is, David, convert to this religion, which will somehow automatically turn off your ability to think rationally about any subject. And then you too can be like us, reading words <laughs> off a page that have nothing to do with what you say they mean and distorting their meaning. That's the irony, Sam. You take these verses like 378 and it talks about people corrupting the meaning with their mouths. That's what Muslims are doing with the Quran. And if they're telling us that this means that the text of whatever they're misrepresenting has been corrupted, then the Quran has been corrupted because they're misrepresenting it with their mouths. And they do not get this. I feel some videos coming on, man. I feel some videos That's coming on. That's what I was on. about to say, I feel man. like you stacks of videos. right out of my mouth. If you guys noticed. You took it out of my mouth, man. You I need to now show them. They're the very thing the Quran condemns the Jews and Christians for. They twist the Quran, misinterpret the Quran, they add to the Quran, they subtract from the Quran. They are the very things that the Quran condemns. They are the shredders of the Quran. You need to do videos. They shredded it. They're shredding it left and right. Exactly. They're shredding it, but I'm. have you guys noticed that I'm killing it? Killing it on YouTube, getting crazy views, getting all kinds of new subscribers. <laughs> yeah. Cor coronaviruses. Yeah, coronavirus this is the generation in jesus name by the grace of jesus christ who is alive who is risen who's the almighty son of god as he uses sinners like us to glorify the name of the lord jesus by the powers of the holy spirit i pray this will be the generation that sees islam wiped from the face of the earth and muslims leave islam in droves and find salvation in jesus christ their lord and savior i hope we're that generation because this this technology the internet social media is the destruction of Islam, right? Yeah, I, I don't know if you remember this, Sam, but this must have been, gosh, this might have this might have been before Nabil became a Christian, because this is way back in the day. But way back in the day, one of my first articles I ever posted on answering Islam. This might have been like two thousand four, two thousand five, right? I posted an article. Well, Yokin po posted an article there, and it was titled "Islam Beheaded." Yeah, yeah, I remember that one. Yeah. Islam beheaded, and I post. I, I called it Islam beheaded because it was shortly after uh, uh, that journalist uh, uh, had been beheaded by uh, Al Qaeda, I think. And uh, so I posted a video called, uh, I mean, uh, an article called "Islam Beheaded: The Information Superhighway and the Death of Mohammedanism." And I argued You're that a prophet, the, bro. I argued yeah. that the I argued that the internet is gonna is gonna destroy it. That 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 Muslim leaders for 14 centuries have been able to keep their people isolated from hearing any criticisms of Islam, any serious challenges to Islam. And now because of the internet, they're gonna hear it, and it's not gonna it's not gonna be instant, but it is it is going to happen. Way back in the day, way before so YouTube. You are more of a prophet than Muhammad because you prophesied this. Early on, and Dude. your words are coming true by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. They're being fulfilled before your eyes by the power of the Lord of glory, Jesus Christ, the Father, Son, our God, our love, our Savior. Be magnified, Lord Jesus, by the power of your spirit. See, man, you're more of a prophet than him, bro. I'm going to argue that. I'm going to argue that. Um, I should make a video about that. But uh, it's it's just funny that, I mean, back then it was kind of, I mean, it seemed absurd to lots of, lots of Muslims because, you know, you know, shortly after that, you had you had Nabil and you had some converts, but 
there weren't a lot of there weren't a lot of people leaving Islam and, and coming out and, and speaking out about it. They were they were rare. They were rare enough that Muslims could say, you know, they're all fakes. Now there's just there's just ex Muslims everywhere. They're all over the place, right? There's so many ex Muslims. You walk down the street, you run into an ex Muslim. You go to Seven Eleven, ex Muslim. You go get a sandwich, ex Muslim. Ex Muslims yeah. here, ex Muslims there. Yep. And I want to just say something, and I want people to confirm this on their own. I want you to go on YouTube and search Hamza Yusuf, who is actually my favorite Muslim scholar, and I pray Jesus Christ will either grant him the grace to repent and save him or silence him, because he presents this polished side of Islam that misleads people in thinking Islam is a peaceful religion, even though it's from the pit of hell. There is a talk that he gave. Guys, check this out. Don't take my word for it. You do Hamza Yusuf Islamophobia. He has a talk in which he talks about dangerous books and dangerous websites. And Dave, he mentions our website, Answering Islam. And he says, this is probably one of the most dangerous sites, pretty much called us agents of the devil. But then he made an admission. He admits that we accurately cite classical texts. So his objection wasn't that we misquoted that we're misquoting. He even says that they cite classical texts and they cite them accurately. But what's the danger is the way we interpret those sources. So here is underhanded praise. In one breath, he's warning Muslims about answering Islam and other websites like Jihad Watch. He even mentioned Robert Spencer. But at the same token, he cannot say that we have misquoted the classical Islamic sources. He has to admit we do our best by the grace of Jesus Christ. And that's something I can say for David, and he can say it about me. We try our best by the grace of Jesus Christ to honor Jesus Christ, to accurately quote what their sources say, and then bring out their clear implications to the chagrin of people like Hamza Yusuf. So Hamza Yusuf, if you have a problem, it's not with us. It's with your sources that you want to misinterpret and spin in order to avoid the clear implications of your own sources. And you can't stop it because King Jesus is on the throne. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep, and so, Sam, I mean, that's not, like, that's not that long ago. Can you imagine what things are going to be like 10 years from now, 15 years from now? Amen. Amen. Yeah, have you, have, you, have, you, have, you seen, have you seen the videos from Muslim speakers at Muslim events warning people about the great tidal wave of apostasy yes. that they see coming if they do not figure out what to do? <laughs> yes, yes. Bilal, Bilal Phillips, I yeah. saw a clip. He mentioned it. Even Yasser Qadi was talking about Muslims leaving and uh -huh. how it's becoming hard to get them uh, to come back and convince them and so forth. Yeah, it, it, they're seeing the inevitable that Muslims, in light of the Internet, and praise Jesus Christ that he's using this tool, tool mm -hmm. in a glorious manner. Now, at the same time, though, Satan's also using it. Yep. Because there's a battle between the kingdom of the Son of God, the kingdom of light, versus the kingdom of darkness. So Satan is also using social media mm -hmm. to deceive people, mislead people. But Jesus Christ is almighty over Satan. So Jesus Christ will always reign supreme because he'll always raise his soldiers to combat the lies of darkness with the truth. And when the light of Jesus shines, darkness vanishes. It cannot but vanish in the presence of the light of Jesus. So praise his holy name. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Getting and, me excited uh, now. Oh yeah, and it's cool. And, and by the way, that's why that's why I tell people, guys. Uh, that's why I t that's why I talk about an apologetics empire. And by empire, I mean like online empire. We if we know if we know that everyone's going to use this, uh, Christians had better be using the internet to the fullest of our ability and potential. Because if we're not, guess what? Other people are. They are. Yes, yep. atheists, oh, yeah. agnostics, Muslims, and, and at the same time, because we want to go into the, the meat of the matter, and we pray Jesus Christ will be glorified, and he'll anoint us by the Spirit to speak truth for the glory of Jesus, save us from error, and bless you, even Muslims. Same time, this comes at a price. As David Wood said the other day, and I said, I am not aware of any person who's doing work for the glory of Jesus, whether against Islam or some other worldview, that's not suffering in some way. If it's not physical, it's emotional. If it's not emotional, it's financial. So this too comes at a price because uh, remember- A lot of times all of the above, right? Yes. And there some are people, of us, yeah, there are people some, catching yeah. it every single way. Yeah, and that's why I'm saying uh, because the Bible is true and the God of the Bible is real 
and the Bible tells us there is a kingdom of darkness. Satan is real. Evil spirits are real. They will not leave us alone. They're going to do everything they can in their limited power to discourage us and try to dissuade us from pursuing ministry because their attacks are heavy. But he that is in us is greater than he who is in the world. As long as we're covered by the blood of Jesus, the Lamb, and filled with the Spirit, we will keep fighting and attacking and assaulting the kingdom of darkness and destroying it by the weapons that God has given us. And by way of testimony, since David Wood told me to come online to start doing these shows, the attack on me has been relentless. I've been attacked in these past week and a half in a way that really <clears throat> affects me emotionally, but I keep trusting and Jesus and trucking, knowing Jesus will preserve me no matter what. And it is, it is every moment up to and including right the second we're going live. <laughs> yeah, Relentless. it's real. The that's battle's awesome. real. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. battle is real. But that's good news, right? That means Satan's yeah. upset. Yeah. You know, you know what we need? We need an entire army of Christian psychopaths. Yeah, um, man. Oh, so they don't feel nothing. <laughs> no emotion. <laughs> so pray uh, for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bathe us in prayer and fast for us. We need your prayers to cover us because without Jesus, we can't do it. Mm-hmm. Shout out to uh, Zach 1237 and uh, Sophia Agape in the uh, um, in the uh, channel memberships, the channel memberships, the Boom Squad. Um, guys, just so you know, we uh, we have a bunch of episodes of uh, Muhammad's Boom Boom Room just haven't been released yet. The main the main reason I've mentioned this before. The main reason was I just was not happy with my uh, accent for Jeffrey Epstein because I had no clue what the guy sounded like. I could not find any interviews with this guy. Vocab found one little clip from some sort of deposition or something like that where he spoke for like two seconds and said his name or something like that. And uh, couldn't remember it when we were recording, so I just had no kind of consistent episode. And, and so I haven't, even, I haven't, I'm just like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to put that up. I know it's not a good accent, but finally deciding I'm just going to put it up and because we want to get to all the other ones. Anyway, uh, those of you who are in the, uh, in the boom squad, you'll, you'll get that ahead of time. So I'll probably post it, um, uh, probably post that tomorrow and, uh, but not, not on my, not on my, I mean, it'll be on my channel, but it'll be, it'll be private so far. And if you guys will get to watch it, you'll get a, you'll get a link. All right, Sam. Now we have this topic, by the way, guys, this one's going to be kind of laid back. Cause you know, just those last couple of live streams were killing where I don't know about Sam, but it was killing me just, you know, three, four yeah, hours oh, going through clip oh, after clip, after clip, after clip. So this one's going to be a little more laid back. We're going to look at some, uh, some comments in the chat, chat with people, but we'll also go through. Some of these passages I took screenshots from. So we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and start off with one. I'll pull up one. We'll we'll start talking about that. Any of you Muslims who are watching, any of you Muslims who are watching, if you think, because again, we, we, as we mentioned, you've had plenty of time, right? You've got your apologists cranking out videos left and right, trying to answer us. Um, we've uh, we've we've been putting this material out for years, pointing out that your Quran does nothing but affirm the inspiration and the preservation and the ongoing continuing authority of mm. our scriptures. And we have asked you for one, just one, showing that the showing that the gospel's been corrupted, showing that the gospel that Christians have in our hands has been corrupted. We've been asking you that. So, um, if you think if you think that some uh, some verse in the Quran refutes us, now, yeah. now, now's your opportunity the during, during this Come live on, stream. During this live stream, we're gonna pull some up from the uh, from the comments section of some of the videos, and uh, you can bring them up in the chat. So uh, we know that space is limited, and you can't always post everything. Just give us a little phrase or something like that you, that you think shows that uh, that the the gospel has been corrupted. We'll be happy to pull up the passage and go ahead and uh, go ahead and look through that. All right, so should we go ahead and jump on this? <laughs> Go ahead, brother. Someone just said, how much should I pay Shamu not to flex his chesticles? Because I keep doing this. Go ahead. I'm ready, bro. That's why I'm doing it, because I'm pumped. I'm pumped. Why do you think I'm doing this? I mean, come on. Shh. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and uh, wait a second. And by the way, David, you got a fan watching you. Uh, my daughters, my firstborn, my youngest, they're watching David because they love David. And they love David because they love Baba who loves David. Love you, girls. Jesus bless you. Keep watching and learning. Get closer to Christ. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to look at our yes, and God bless all of Sam's little girls who are watching. Amen. All right, here we go. Get ready to have your mind blown, Sam. That's I'm going to take Shahada. You, you've been really tempted. i got to be honest. These sessions, you've tempted my faith like <laughs> never before. I'm about to recant and take Shahada, bro. Why are you doing this to me? Sam, this is... Uh... 
I, I mean, I understand that they're desperate. I understand that they're desperate and they got nothing to work with. But to keep going to Sura 3, verse 78, Adnan did it. I mean, Adnan only posted a couple of videos at the, I mean, a couple of verses at the end of his video. And this is one of them. This is one, I mean, apart from 279, I probably see 378 most often. And it is so absolutely, oh, okay. it is so absolutely silly and ridiculous. So let's go ahead and read this. So this is the comment. And again, Muslims Muslims would send me this in the in the chat. I mean, in the in the comments, Muslims would send me this. They'd quote it and they'd say, so are you going to honor your word and recite the Shahada? And I told them, I told them when I posted my video, guys, make sure, make sure this is talking about the gospel and make sure it's talking about the corruption of the text. Because when you guys Google these verses and you post them, you, you don't seem to read them. So please read them. All right, now let's go ahead and read it. Surah 3, verse 78. Again, ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the two most common verses I get to show that the, the gospel has been corrupted. The text of the gospel has been corrupted. Surah 3, verse 78. And there is indeed a group among them who twist their tongues with the book that you may suppose it to be from the book, but it is not from the book. And they say it is from God, though it is not from God. And they knowingly speak a lie against God. Now, now guys, just, just for, first of all, look, look at what the verse is saying, because it's saying the exact opposite. Right? They say they twist it with their tongues that you would think that their words that they're saying with their mouths are from the book, but it's not from the book. Okay? Hmm. So notice, Sam, once again, this would be like me saying, guys, the Quran says Muhammad is a false prophet. Don't believe in this liar. The Quran says it. So I've just said that something is from the Quran when it's not from the Quran. Would any Muslim on the planet or anywhere in history say that the Quran has been corrupted because I said that with my mouth? Yeah, yeah. No one. Yeah. Go ahead. What, what's, what's shocking, folks, as Christians, and I need the Christians to hear this, we have the tendency, if we're serious students of the Bible, to want to read things in context. Yeah. Now, with the Quran, that's kind of difficult because sometimes the Quran in a chapter – the chapter will discuss one topic and then in midstream bring up something totally off topic unrelated to what it was just discussing but now why do i say that <clears throat> because now notice they're quoting chapter 3 verse 78 and like like a broken record we've gone over this over and over again i even quoted ibn kathir who explained what bukhari said and in his explanation of chapter 3 verse 78 so ibn kathir in his exposition of chapter 3 verse 78 quotes Bukhari, who said, none of the words of Allah can be corrupted and changed. And then he cites Wahab bin Munabba, Wahab bin Munabba, who says that the Torah and the gospel remain uncorrupt, pure, because they cannot be corrupted. And yet they still go to the passage which says nothing about the text being corrupted, but twisting it with their tongue, meaning misinterpreting the text. And there is no Christian that I'm aware of, there is no Jew that I'm aware of, that would deny that there are people both before, during, after time Muhammad, even to this day, that do twist the Bible with their tongues, not with their pen. They don't falsify and corrupt the text, but they do misinterpret the Bible, and that's why you have Protestants and Catholics and Orthodox and each specific group accusing the other of misinterpreting the Bible. But if we read this passage in context, we read this passage in context, in the context of chapter 3. In fact, David and I, seem to show more respect to the Quran, and that's not our aim. My aim is not, I don't believe the Quran is the Word of God. But it seems that we Christians, we kufar, we kafirun, tend to show more respect for the Quran because we assume the Quran can be read contextually and clearly, and that the Quran does say things in a manner that's understandable. We're, we're giving the Quran the benefit of the doubt that it's understandable and there's a context. It's the Muslims who are telling us, no, the Quran is not clear, cannot be understood, and it's a contextual. Irony of ironies, because why? Folks, the answer to chapter 3, verse 78, is found in the beginning of chapter 3. Let me just real quickly go through this. Chapter 3, verses 3 and 4. Chapter 3, verses 3 and 4 tells you what 378 cannot mean. Tells you what 378 cannot mean. It says, it is he who sent down to you, Muhammad, the truth, meaning the book, confirming what is between your hands, musaddiqan lima bayna yadehi, literally between your hands. This is an enigmatic expression, meaning whatever Muhammad had access to, 
in regards to the previous scriptures at that time, his Quran confirms it. Well, the only scriptures that the Jews and Christians had at his time are what we have in the Bible today. This is a fact of history, archaeology, and the textual tradition. So what does the Quran do? Doesn't falsify it by saying it's corrupt. It confirms its integrity because the word musaddiqan, sadaqa, look up any lexical source. Sadaqa means to bear witness to a thing's veracity, to confirm its integrity, its veracity, not to falsify it. So it says, it is he who sent down to thee the truth, the book confirming what is between his hands. And he sent down the Torah and the gospel before this, being before the Quran, as a guide to mankind. And he sent down Al-Furqan. So that's number one. This very chapter says the Quran confirms the textual veracity of the scriptures that were there in the hands of the Jews and Christians. And then it names them, the Torah and the gospel. Secondly, chapter 3, verse 50. Chapter three, This is all the same surah, folks. I'm not going to another surah. Chapter 3, verse 50, this is what is put in the mouth of Jesus, Isa. He will come to you confirming the Torah between his hands. It's, وَمُسَدِّقٍ, that's that verb again, sadaqa, لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيَّ, what he had access to, what he could pick up and read with his own hands. He confirms the Torah in his day. Now, historically, folks, this is there's no argument. <clears throat> Historically, what Jesus had at the time is the very Old Testament you possess today because we have copies of the Old Testament called the Dead Sea Scrolls, written before the time of Christ. We have versions of the Old Testament, and they're virtually unanimous in spite of any variant readings, right? And Jesus confirmed that Torah in his day, which means that Jesus confirmed the Old Testament we have today. So if the Quran is true, then the Old Testament has never been corrupted. Jesus confirmed the Old Testament he had, identical to what we have today. Muhammad confirms the Old Testament that he had access to in his time, which is identical to what we have today. And he confirmed the gospel that the Christians had in his day, which we have today, because they weren't reading something different. So whatever chapter 3, verse 78 means, it cannot mean the Bible has been corrupted wholesale so that the original Torah and gospel are no longer in their pure, pristine form let alone chapter 3, verses 113 and 114, and chapter 3, verse 199. Write these down, chapter 3, verses 113 and 114, and chapter 3, verse 199. It says, not all of the Jews and Christians are alike. Not all the people are alike, because among them are an upright folk who read the scriptures the way they're supposed to be read, and they fear Allah and will not sell his signs for a miserable gain. So there was a group considered righteous among the Jews and Christians who read their scriptures the way it should be read and were not corrupted for money. What else do you want? Mm -hmm. This is all chapter three. Um, yeah, Sam, you're gonna you're gonna need to repeat some of that for some of these other uh, passages here. Again, all right. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> repeat, right. repeat whatever you need to repeat because as I've told people before, as I've told people before. Um, Anytime you see a clip from one of these live streams and you think, hey, that would make, you know, instead of a two hour live stream, why don't we, you know, that would make a good five, six minute video right there. Feel free to download it, cut out that part, re-upload it on your own own channel. Yeah. Make a video Let me repeat out of it. those verses. When someone asked me, chapter three, verses 113 and 114 and chapter three, verse 199, all chapter three. So if you want me to repeat it real quickly, chapter three, verses three and four, chapter three, verse 50. Chapter 3, verses 113, 114. Chapter 3, verse 199. There you go. Um, Riaz Qureshi said, is David in the boom boom room so dark? No, guys, uh, I've, I've said it before. Anytime you see this behind me, it's because I recorded a video in the evening. Um, so that's why I record my normal videos right over here. And uh, if I'm recording about after about 4 o'clock p.m., that's when the sun is blasting right through this window and it totally destroys uh, lighting in here. So I have to actually hang a completely black cover over it to uh to not ruin my video um and michael marcos here says uh the question is after all the evidence proofs and arguments you have provided why are people still muslims well that's a that's a combination hmm. of reasons one that it is obviously there's a there's a spiritual component um but uh islam islam magnifies this because uh one, Muslims are taught all their lives that the worst possible sin, the worst possible sin is the sin of shirk. So you say Jesus is Lord, you've just signed a one-way ticket to hell. 
They understand that the consequences for leaving the religion are much more severe in Islam than they would be, you know, for most people around the world. Um, and that, you know, best case scenario, you're going to have a very, very difficult relationship with your family from then on. But you, you also hear, uh, you hear very, very frequently, yeah, I left Islam and I told my parents and then they told me they not to not to show their faces around here anymore until uh, until I'm a Muslim again. And so uh, they deal with that. And then, of course, there's the fact that uh, the penalty for leaving Islam is death. So when a Muslim for a Muslim to leave Islam, uh, for a Muslim to leave Islam, when he's been taught all his life that this is uh, that this is. Uh, you know, this is true, and leaving this will get you sent to hell, and uh, you're going to have to give up your family, and it might get your head chopped off. That is massive amount. That is a yeah. massive amount of pressure. Also, in, in the Muslim world, um, girls are married off at a younger age, so by the time they're even seriously thinking about all this, they're already married, and they've got three or four kids, and it's very, very difficult yeah. for them to, to decide to leave Islam and, and pursue another religion. So Islam just specializes in absolute demonic fashion in keeping people from ever thinking seriously um, about this. And when it comes to the gospel, Islam Islam corrupts people's thinking so much that they can't understand anything that's being said. Again, why? Because the, the Muhammad and Allah don't understand anything that anyone's saying. When we say Jesus is the son of God, no Christian means that, that God produced a biological offspring, right? No one, no one means that. Muslims, the, the Allah and Muhammad think that's what we mean. And so now Muslims think we mean that, right? And so they think, ah, oh, it's just so ridiculous and so on. So basically you go down the line and the core doctrines of Christianity, Muslims are taught to believe the opposite. And it becomes very, very difficult for them to understand anything you're saying if you're, if you're preaching the gospel. Anything you want to add to, end to that, Sam? No, you covered it. And like once some person was just saying, you know, what about being killed? And you mentioned the fact persecution and death. I guarantee you guys, I guarantee you that if Islam removed death for apostates, you would see hundreds of thousands, if not millions, openly confessing their apostasy. Mm -hmm. Openly. A lot of them are secretly apostates, but they can't verbalize it because they'll be killed. So, no, I mean, it's obvious why many won't leave Islam, because like he said, the social economic pressures, but also people don't want to be, be killed. They don't want to die. Mm -hmm. Right. They don't want to be beheaded. I mean, come on. Um, anyway. Yeah. And you, you actually got some confirmation here. Uh, mm -hmm. Here we have a comment. Uh, it is true. They will kill us in Iraq if they know that we're ex-Muslims. Of course. Definitely. Yep. That the wicked religion that says if you leave Islam, you'll be killed in order to enslave people to an ideolo ideology that is so obviously false and stupid and irrational. But that's just the nature of the beast. But glory to God still, folks. Good news. In spite of the threat of murdering apostates, you still have thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, who are still coming to Jesus Christ, worshiping Jesus Christ. In fact, I know a pastor that was a pastor of an underground church in Saudi Arabia. He was a Filipino pastor who actually got caught and they were going to kill him. But by the grace of God, through the prayers of the people of God, the government put pressure and Saudi Arabia released him and threw him out of the country. I think two days before Christmas, his name was Pastor Wally. The problem with that is this man didn't want to stay out. He was trying to find a way to go back. Talk about someone zealous for the glory of Jesus. He wanted to return knowing that he could be killed. He didn't care. And he said, I heard him face to face because I met him in a church where he's giving a talk. And he told me that in his underground church, he said several hundred to about a thousand that would come in Saudi Arabia. Glory to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You cannot cage the gospel. You cannot stop the gospel from spreading. Jesus is all powerful. The Holy Spirit is almighty. You cannot stop the spirit from bringing people to the feet of Jesus, not even death. Linda Clark here said, uh, David, how do we get to your level of understanding? Well, uh, Linda, I, I believe it's possible to get to my level of understanding. You just watch my videos and study some things and uh, take notes on things that, that stand out to you and always be thinking, hey, how can I take what this says and make it and put it in a way that helps helps it stick in people's minds. That's what I do. So I think that's that's uh, not terribly difficult to do. If you if you had said, "How do we get to Sam Shamoon's level of understanding?" That's a, that's a, 
I, I don't. I'm not sure that's that's possible <laughs> because. Well, my uh, my brother tells me what the secret is. He dropped me when I was a kid. I was a year and a half. Yeah. He was playing with me, and he threw me up, and he wasn't there to catch me, and I hit my. The true story, though, by the way, I did fall when I was a year and a half and cracked my head. I have the bump in the back of my head. And, that, that did and that's before you got hit by the car running across the street, right? Oh, yeah. That was, yeah, two things. Yeah, I got hit my head, and I got hit by the car, and I flipped. And land on my back, got up, not a scratch. You know Jesus had plans for me. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and and so, yeah, I don't think you can reach Sam's level of understanding without uh, having Sam Shamoon's brain. And that's not entirely a compliment, right? Yeah, yeah. I read an article years ago on how these things work because they would do studies on people like autistic savants and so on, like like people like Rain Man who can calculate massive numbers in their heads and stuff like that. It turns out we're all capable of doing these kinds of things, right? We can all, we can all do these amazing things. We can all remember everything. We can all uh, we can all um, uh, calculate these these huge numbers. We can all read a book and remember everything we read and so on. Our brains are capable of that. However. All the areas of our brain working are generating electrical interference with all the other areas. So all the areas of your brain are held back, are being held back by all the other areas. In people who have uh, special uh, autistic abilities, the autistic savants and so on, it's that their brains aren't doing a lot in other areas. Their brains are like they don't, they don't, they're not working in other areas very well. And so this stops the this this prevents a lot of the electrical interference, and then the 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 area of their brain that's responsible for some amazing activity can just work at full power and they can do all these amazing things. And then, so you got someone like Sam who he gets dropped on his head. He gets hit by a car, lands on his head, keeps getting his head busted and so on. Yeah. It basically takes out all these normal areas of his brain. And then there's no interference for the one area that deals with apologetics and theology and, and the Bible and the Quran. There's that one area is like turbocharged. So yeah, if you want to get Sam's level of understanding, you're just going to have to keep banging all the correct areas of your brain until they don't work anymore, and then you'll you'll have one turbocharged area. All right. See, but that's a testimony that God even takes evil things in our lives and uses them for his glory. Who would have thunk it? Me hitting my head and getting it by a car mm -hmm. would be used by God to make me what I am for his glory, right? So there's mm -hmm. hope for you guys mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you said, uh, Rain Man, my grandma and your grandma, but go ahead. Uh, Sam, can you make uh, can you make waffles? No, I can't. <laughs> See, Rain Man. No, I can't. Rain Man couldn't make waffles. He, he almost no, burned the place I... down. That's um, a complaint of my brother. My brother lives with me. He says he goes, dude. He even says he goes, you're only wired for one thing. Mm -hmm. It's the ministry. Everything else, you're complete. You know, just a world class loser. That is correct. That is correct. Mm -hmm. And yet, this loser has two daughters. Can you believe mm -hmm. that? Praise God. But anyway. All right. Uh, so let let's go ahead and read that verse one more time, just so everyone remembers. Uh, Surah 3, verse 78, and there is indeed a group among them who twist with their it's with their tongues the book that you may suppose it to be from the book, but it is not from the book. And they say it is from God, though it is not from God, and they knowingly speak a lie against God. Now, Sam, notice, even, uh, I mean, here, when it says they knowingly speak a lie, you'd have to know what the what the book really says Precisely. to know that you're lying. Yeah. So this, is, this yeah. can be in no way referring to the corruption of the text. And yet again, ladies and gentlemen, when we ask for one clear verse from the Quran, that's what we get. That is what we get. This is what an amazing, what an amazing religion here. Emphasize, David, that it says a group, a group that says it doesn't say all of them. And the same Quran says there was another group who did recite the scriptures with integrity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's yeah. So yep. yeah. And they won't say that that means the Bible's been preserved, but they will say that that this someone speaking out of you know someone saying something. And Sam, a, a little, little little side note there. I don't know a Muslim on this planet who doesn't say that that some other Muslim group is misrepresenting the Quran with their mouths. I don't know, yeah, one, right? Yeah. Every, every, no. If you go to a peaceful Muslim, they say ISIS is misrepresenting Islam. They're 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 distorting the meaning of Islam. Well, why does no Muslim say? Well, that means the Quran's been corrupted because that's what we say about the Bible. If someone if someone uh, misrepresents the Bible with their mouths, uh, that means the text has been corrupted. Therefore. If ISIS is misrepresenting the Quran, or if Shias are misrepresenting the Quran, or if Ahmadis are misrepresenting the Quran, that means the Quran has been corrupted. No Muslim on the planet would say that. Why? Because when they're talking about their own book, somehow, in yeah. this in this particular case, uh, yeah. in this particular case, in order to defend their book, their logical reasoning ability turns on for 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 a brief moment, 
and they say, wait a minute, someone's saying something about a book and, and mi misquoting it and distorting it, that would have nothing to do with the text being corrupted. They, they understand that because it's to defend their book. As soon as they want to attack the Bible, they have to turn their reasoning ability off completely so that anything, any statement about the book qualifies as, as, as corruption of the text, and they just don't see it. But guess what? We're going to keep pointing it out until, until they do see it. And boy, is it going to be a fun ride along the way. <laughs> All right, should we go on to, uh, should we go on to another one? Yeah, bar? this is like a walk in the park, but we have to do it for the glory of Jesus and to get Muslims to see the truth by the power of the Holy Spirit. So let's do it. All right, I'm going to go to this next verse. Uh, I did want to pull up, uh, let's see. This is in the older edition. All right, so Skull Super said, uh, put this up on the screen. Can you explain about Sahih Bukhari, 660, uh, volume 6, chapter 60, uh, number 475, about Muhammad praying to Satan? Thank you, brothers in Christ. Muhammad praying to Satan? Muhammad praying to Satan. Now, I can't... Does he mean Allah? I can't exactly look that one up because my... my uh, my volume of my edition of Bukhari uses a different numbering system. So are you familiar yeah, yeah. with that? Uh, I would be shocked if you find a hadith that says he prayed to Satan. Yeah. So I'm wondering what this. I'm wondering what this is about. Yeah. Now, yeah. He's probably may, misread it. Now, but, may, yeah. may, maybe when we maybe when we look at it's something we're familiar with and we're just uh, we're just reading it differently. Let me see. Six. six yeah. Six, no, that's that's yeah. No, I mean I can bring it up real quick, but. To have a hadith where he prays to Satan, no, uh, that would not make it in the hadith collection. So you probably are assuming that because Muhammad had a conversation with Satan, somehow that means he's praying to Satan. Uh, because yeah, I, I'm telling you, if that's oh, oh no no no, no it, yeah no no I, I get it. It's not it's not it's not saying it. Yeah, it's not saying it. So okay, here yeah, here's here's the that's passage. That's where you threw me off. Yeah, so here, here's what it actually says. Uh, narrated blah blah blah. Once Allah's apostle became sick and could not offer his night prayer for two or three nights. So Muhammad gets too sick to pray. Could not offer his night prayer for two or three nights. Then a lady, the wife of Abu Lahab. <laughs> is, 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 oh, yeah. Oh, he's saying that that's what yeah, yeah. they said. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, no, 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 no. Check, check it out. Check it out. Then a lady, the wife of Abu Lahab, came and said, Oh, Muhammad, I think that your Satan has forsaken you. Yes, that hadith I know, yeah. Came and yeah. said, Oh, Muhammad, I think, I think that your Satan has forsaken you, for I have not seen him with you for two or three nights. Yeah, yeah. On that, yeah, that hadith I'm aware of, yeah. I knew that. That's what they said. I, I, think, I, think, I think this is what he's doing, because uh, it continues. On that, Allah revealed, by the forenoon and by the night when it is darkness, your Lord, O Muhammad, has neither forsaken you nor hated you. So in other words, mm -hmm. so in other words, the woman says, Satan has forsaken you, and then Allah reveals, your Lord has not forsaken you. Like it's yeah. a, like it's it's uh it's yeah like it's agreeing with her. So I think that yeah, I think yeah, that's yeah. where he's going with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, well obviously the Muslim will say she's slandering him by saying yeah. he has a Satan, yeah. whereas Allah says no, it's not Satan, it's Allah your Lord who's with you, no matter what they say about you. Because he was accused of being demon possessed. That's mm -hmm. clear in the Quran itself. They say he's majnoon. Now in its historical context, and we want to get back to these verses, historical context, when you said someone is majnoon, it means possessed of a jinn. Mm -hmm. And jinn were considered good and bad. It, the bad jinn are what we would call devils or demons. The Quran calls them shayateen. So there were people who thought he was demon possessed. And that was something that even his wet nurse, the one who breastfed him, Halima, thought. Because <clears throat> according to the sources, when Muhammad was a young man, supposedly two men came, knocked him down, cut open his chest, and took this black, black clot from his chest, from his heart, purifying him. And then his wet nurse freaked out and panicked, her name Halima. So she went back to Muhammad's mother. And Muhammad's mother, Amina, asked her, do you think he's demon-possessed? She goes, yes. And she goes, wallahi, he's not. He's not demon-possessed. So since he was a child, people thought he was demon-possessed. This is something in the Muslim sources, not Jewish sources, not Christian sources. Muhammad himself thought that initially the spirit that came and manhandled him was a demon, that he was demon-possessed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that dude definitely had some spiritual problems. In fact, you know, I, I don't think I've made a video anytime recently really going through all this dude's spiritual problems about his revelations and so on. I mean, you know, sounds like something out of The Exorcist when this guy was receiving revelations.
You should do it, man. I might have the to people do that. need to know. Oh, you know, you know, it'd be awesome. Have vocab reenact all this stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, that's even better. You need to do that because people need to see the way he got revelation. Totally different from how the true prophets of the Bible received revelation. Right? Totally different. We got to do it, man. It's, guys, as soon as this coronavirus is over, I'm keeping notes on all these awesome ideas. Gonna have a plus. I mean, plus he's out there in Arizona. There are caves all over the place. You know what I mean? Go find a cave. Have Muhammad walking out of the cave. Yeah, I don't think you want to give too much details where he's at. It's okay. Yeah, he's yeah. He's in uh, Florida. He's in uh, uh, he's in Hawaii. Good man. No, he uh, he's all he's all over the place in his videos there. Uh, but yeah, they can't they can't they can't find his his exact okay, just, location. I just wanted, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. safe. He's safe. That's why I said Arizona. Um. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and go on to the next verse. So you saw, again, one of the top two verses that Muslims quote, they misrepresent it with their mouths, therefore the text is corrupted. Okay, Muslims, does that mean that the Quran's corrupted when people misrepresent it with their mouths? No. Notice the, the hypocrisy. Endless, endless, endless. All right, I don't know what's popping up next because I took a bunch of screenshots. Let's see what's next. All right. This one is... Chapter 5, verse 15. Sam, are you yeah, ready for this? Right. Are you no, ready I'm for gonna, this? Um, no, I'm in a shock. Rock, that's it. I'm about to give up. You're... <laughs> it's funny because he spells profit, profit, like like money profit. That's what people normally do to mock. Uh, yeah, to, to mock that's him. what I do. Yeah, I know, but <laughs> here you have Khalid doing it. O people of the scripture, Jews and Christians, now has come to you our messenger, Prophet Muhammad, explaining to you much of that which you used to hide from the scripture and pass over, i.e. leaving out without explaining much. Indeed, there has come to you from Allah a light, Prophet Muhammad, and a plain book, this Quran. Actually, I don't know how they can even call, how Muslims can take this seriously, calling the Quran a plain book. According to them, Allah just can't yeah. say what he means, right? It's not plain. Allah says, um, Allah says that we have to judge by the gospel. What's that mean, Muslims? Oh, it means don't judge by the gospel because you don't have it. <clears throat> Allah says we have no ground to stand upon unless we stand upon the gospel. What's he mean by that, Muslims? Oh, he means uh, he means uh, don't stand upon that 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 garbage. It's all corrupt. You need to stand upon the Quran. Totally different from what Allah says. What's he mean when he says that no one can change his words? Oh, he means uh, yeah, something else. But uh, yeah, you can corrupt his words. So it's just it's the least plain book in the history of humanity. Why is Allah bragging about his book being plain? All right, Sam, so let's go ahead and go through this. You can comment. Oh, people of the yeah. scripture. Oh, people of the scripture. Notice, Sam, a little side note here. The Quran, over and over again, refers to people of the book using the honorific title, people of the scripture. But yes. if we read it the way Muslims do, namely, it's just talking about our corrupt scripture, it's actually an insult, but he's not. It's clearly it's clearly a title of honor. We're above yes. everyone else because we have we have the book. And yet it's supposedly an insult, according to Muslims. Oh, people of the yeah. scripture, Jews and Christians, now has come to you our messenger, Prophet Muhammad, explaining to you much of that which you used to hide from the scripture and pass over much. All right, Sam. So yeah. uh, uh, people of the book, Jews and Christians used to hide some things and they used yeah. to pass over some things. This means that the text of the Torah and the gospel have been corrupted. Are you ready to accept That's Islam? It. That's it. I'm about to change. Now, what's ironic here, you, you're, you're reading the verse explains. It's, it's self-explanatory because, again, notice it says they've been hiding, concealing the book, right? <clears throat> concealing the book and passing over much. Well, Dave, uh, help me understand because, remember, I'm not the logician. You are. How do you hide something and overlook something that you no longer possess? Mm -hmm. Okay, I want people to understand what, what the verse said. They would hide something and overlook something. So again, my question is, again, because I'm not the sharpest you know, tool in the shed. I keep saying that like a broken record. You cannot hide something and overlook something that you don't have. You can only ha hide something that you have and overlook something that's in your possession. So the very verse assumes that Allah is holding them accountable because they do have the scripture, but they either ignore those parts of the scripture they don't like, right? And just hide over it. So this passage, if you actually read it clearly, it's not saying that the scriptures are corrupted. It's actually saying you have the scriptures, but you ignore those scriptures, you set it aside, and you overlook those parts you don't like, which actually dovetails 
to what you've been saying in the previous sessions concerning chapter 5, verses 43 to 48. Now, we're going to give a contextual reading to what this passage means and cannot mean. Now, remember, David, what you said, and maybe you can bring it up, even that hadith in Sunan Abu Dawood, even though we want to focus on the Quran, but still, most Muslims are Sunni Muslims. In chapter 5, verse 43, how many times did you repeat that passage that says to the Jews, why do they come to you, Muhammad, seeing that the, they have the Torah, and in it is guidance and light? Now, mm -hmm. historically, what was the context of that passage, David? The, what were they trying to do? They, were, they, they asked Muhammad to judge a dispute that they were having over uh over one of the one of the uh punishments and uh, Allah says why do they come to you when they have the Torah and then it and it, yeah. and it says it, it says they're rebels against Allah if they don't judge by the Torah and understand what he just said they wanted to come to Muhammad to pass a judgment that was lenient that they liked ignoring the judgment of the Torah now folks don't take my word for it don't take David Wood's word for it look up Ibn Kathir who believes the Bible's corrupt According to Ibn Kathir and other Muslim scholars, the reason why chapter 5 verse 43 was sent down, and we're going to look at it to show that in the context, 515 does not mean the text has been corrupted. It actually presupposes the text has been preserved, but the guilt of the Jews and the Christians, particularly the Jews, is that they ignore what's in their text and overlook what's in their text because they don't want to carry out the injunctions of their text. And that's what Allah is angry with. And what's the proof? This very passage, 543, according to the commentators, and Christians, I need you to hear this, so Muslims don't use these passages against you, twisting their own Quran with their own tongues, doing the very thing the Quran accuses Jews and Christians of doing. The Jews <clears throat> caught a couple committing adultery. It says, Zinna. This is the exposition, the quote-unquote historical context of chapter 5, verse 43. So they decided to go to Muhammad, and they said, if Muhammad gives us a lenient judgment, then we'll go with it. If he gives a harsh one, we'll reject it. Because according to the Torah, and you can find this in Deuteronomy chapter 22, start reading from 13 all the way to 30. There you'll find the prescribed punishments for various sexual and moral acts. And there you'll find in Deuteronomy 22, an express command that the adulterer and the adulteress are to be stoned and killed. So they didn't want to go with that harsh command. So they said, we'll go to Muhammad, and we're going to ask for his judgment. If he gives us a lenient one, we'll go with it. So notice what they're doing. They're doing what 5.15 is saying that they're doing. They are concealing what's in the Torah and overlooking it, passing over it. What are they passing over? The injunction to stone adulterers. And the Hadith even says that Muhammad said, bring your Torah. That's Sunan Abu Dawud, which you read even yesterday. In Sunan Abu Dawud, Muhammad and Ibn Kathir actually cites this. He cites this very tradition, as does Ibn Qayyim al Jawziyah. Both Ibn Kathir, Ibn Qayyim al Jawziyah, the two students of Ibn Taymiyyah, whom Salafis call Sheikh al Islam, they both cite this narration. Ibn Kathir cites it in his exposition of chapter 5, verse 41. They both cite this narration where Muhammad is sitting on a pillow. And he says, bring me your copy of the Torah. And he removes the pillow and he puts the Torah on it. And he says, I believe in you and the one who sent you. This is historical background of chapter 5 verse 43. Other narrations fill in the gaps. He, it says that he asked the Jews, what does the Torah say? Show me the injunction in the Torah. It says when they turn to that part of the Torah that mentions stoning, it says a Jew put his hand over it to cover it up. Ah, David, that's what it means that they hide and conceal. And Muhammad said, remove your hand. And then there it says stone. And Allah said, and Muhammad said, Allah. well, he is Allah in human flesh, right? Mm -hmm. Muhammad said, I'm the first to revive the command of Allah. In other words, if you read chapter 5, verse 15, in the context of the chapter, and in the background of the narrations that give us historical context of these passages, it's not saying that they hid by corrupting the text. How do you hide something that's no longer there? It actually assumes that they have the Torah, but they're hiding the contents of the Torah and ignoring its injunctions. And guess what Muhammad does? No, follow those injunctions. For the life of me, I don't understand. David, help me understand. Why is Muhammad forcing them to follow the Torah? If Muslims are right, 
That Torah is corrupted. It no longer reflects what God originally sent down. Why is he insisting? No, don't come to me. Don't follow my command. My order to you is follow your Torah because I believe in it and the one who revealed it. Can you help me understand? Yeah, apparently uh, Allah and Muhammad just don't know as much about the Torah as uh, as modern Muslims do. There you go. So that's, that's 543. That's, that's the only right? solution, right? Yeah. And 513, again, I, we've been reading this passage over and over again, but because David said he wants people to make clips of this, because of that, for those who want to make shorter clips, let me read it. Because it's like we've been reading the same passages for the past week. I'm getting tired. But you know what? For the sake of the Christians, to benefit them, for the glory of Christ, here is chapter 5 to tell us what 515 cannot mean, folks. If you believe Muslims, the Quran is contextual and doesn't contradict, then your interpretation of 515 is at odds with what the chapter says. Let me read. 543. Oh, boy, the 48. But why do they come to you for decision when they have the Torah before them? In it is the plain command of Allah. Yet after that, they would turn away. For they are not really people of faith. They are unbelievers. It was we who revealed the Torah. In it is guidance and light. Notice, present tense. In it is, not was. The Torah you have, it has guidance and light. By its standard have been judged the Jews, by the prophets who, who submitted to Allah's will, by the rabbis and the doctors of the law, the Torah. For to them was entrusted the protection of the book of Allah, Kitab Allah. And they were witnesses thereto. Therefore, fear not men, but fear me, and do not sell my signs for a miserable price. If any do fail to judge by what Allah has revealed in what? The Torah? If you fail to judge, they are no better than unbelievers. And then it quotes a command that we find in the Torah today, 545. We, are, we ordained, we prescribed, we wrote in it. Life for life, eye for eye, nose for nose, ear for ear, tooth for tooth, and wounds equal for equal. This is a verbatim citation with some additions of Exodus 21, folks, 23 to 25. So it's even telling you what that Torah looked like, what it contained, because it cites a command that's in our Torah till this day. Exodus 21, verses 23 to 25, and it's found in other portions of the Pentateuch, the Torah, written by Moses by inspiration. But let me continue. But if anyone remits the retaliation by way of charity, it is an atonement for himself. And if any fail to judge by what Allah has revealed, they are no better than wrongdoers. Like a broken drum, Muhammad says, if you don't judge by your Torah, your Torah that you hold, that I just touched, that I just said I believe in, and the one who revealed it, if you don't judge by it, you are a kafir, you're, an, uh, you're a wrongdoer, you're an evildoer. But then it gets better. Chapter 5, verses 46 to 47. And in their footsteps we sent Jesus, the son of Mary, confirming the Torah between his hands. That's the literal Arabic, folks. Ask the Muslim to read the Arabic. It's musaddiqin from sadaqa. Lima bayna yadehi. Ask the person, what does that literally mean? Literally means he confirmed the Torah between his hands. This is an idiomatic expression. It's simply the Arabic way of saying the Torah that he had access to, the Torah he was reading. And folks, historically, archaeologically, there is no debate that the Torah that Jesus would have read is your Torah today, your Old Testament, because what you have today is virtually identical to what Jesus read. So when did the corruption take place? It didn't take place at the time of Muhammad, didn't take place at the time of Jesus, and we have copies of the Old Testament before Christ, after Christ, before Muhammad, identical to what we have today. But let me finish it. Confirming the Torah between his hands. We sent him the gospel. In it is, present tense, not was. In it is guidance and light. And the gospel confirms the Torah between his hands. Musaddiq bin lima bayna yadehi. A guidance and admonition to those who fear Allah. Now, 47. Let the people of the gospel... Let the people, speaking to Muhammad's Christian contemporaries, let them judge as the Jews were ordered to judge by the Torah. You Christians, let the people of the gospel judge by what Allah has revealed in it. In what? The gospel that you have. But what gospel do you have, Christians? Oh, well, the only gospel we have is the books of the New Testament. The only gospel we have are the four gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And the other books written by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, sent by Jesus from heaven, 
to his apostles and their companions to write down the oracles of Christ from heaven. That's the only gospel we have. And here the Quran says, judge by your gospel, instead of saying, no, your gospel's corrupt, cannot be trusted, it's not completely reliable, there's only bits and pieces of it that remain intact. No, 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 judge by it, follow it, because if you don't, if any do fail to judge by what Allah has revealed, they are no better than those who rebel. And finally, two more verses from chapter 5. Chapter 5, verse 66 and 68. 66 and 68. Okay. If only, speaking to Muhammad's Jewish and Christian contemporaries, if only they had stood fast by the Torah, the gospel, and all the revelation sent down to them from their Lord. I mentioned this yesterday, but it, it, it's worth repeating. It doesn't simply say follow the Torah and the gospel. Follow everything that God revealed to you. Everything that God sent down to you. So if you ask a Christian at the time of Muhammad, did God send down to you other books besides the four Gospels? Yes. What are they? The letters of Paul, the letters of Peter, the letters of John, James and Jude Revelation. Well, you know what? I'm ordered to tell you, follow all of that. Follow all that was revealed to you. Because notice what it goes on to say. Right? <clears throat> if only they had stood fast by the Torah, the gospel, all the revelation sent down to them from the Lord, they would have enjoyed happiness from every side. There is from among them a party on the right course. Notice, among them, not all of them are corrupt, among them on the right course because they do follow it. But many of them follow a course that is evil. And then verse 68 of chapter 5, say, O people of the book, there's that word again, Ahlal Kitab, the very word expression used in 5.15. Same chapter, addressing the same people of the book. Same chapter. Say, O oh people of the book, you have no ground to stand on unless you stand fast, hold the Torah you have, the gospel, and all the revelation that has come to you from your Lord. It is revelation that comes to thee from thy Lord that increaseth in most of them their obstinate rebellion and blasphemy. But sorrow not, don't be sorrow over the people without faith. Now notice what it just said. It's saying, though they don't believe in you, Muhammad, and your Quran gets them to oppose you and fight you, and rightfully so, tell them, follow the Torah and the Gospel, their revelation, follow it, and they'll be blessed, and they have nothing to fear. But I'm really confused, David. Mm -hmm. If they follow what the Quran just said, follow your Gospel, Christians, follow your Torah, Jews, and follow all the revealed books given to you. That means we Christians follow the books of the Old and New Testament. Follow it, believe it, act upon it then I have no choice, and they didn't have any choice, but to condemn Muhammad as a false prophet and antichrist for contradicting it, and not a word of rebuke. Don't follow it, because it's not completely reliable. It's corrupt. So let me tell you which parts remain intact, which are corrupt. He goes, no, 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 no. Follow it, and you'll be successful. But Muhammad, if I follow it, I have to condemn you as a son of Satan, antichrist. This is Islamic Dilemma 101. Mm-hmm. And uh, we've been offering Muslims an opportunity to get out of that dilemma, and no luck yet. We give them opportunity after opportunity after opportunity. Uh, Sam, you have a comment from, um, well, it's the, it's the Arabian Prophet channel, so I don't know if this is CP or someone who's, uh, who's using his account with them or something like that, but uh, the Arabian Prophet says there is a very important question about this story uh, of Muhammad, he has them move their hand when the Torah is written in Hebrew, and supposedly he can't even read Arabic. Yes. 100%. So what in the world would Muhammad know about uh, people moving their thumb? <laughs> yeah. Um, one of those mysteries. Surprise, David. One of life's great mysteries. Uh, let me put that verse just back on the screen just for one second, just so everyone can review everything that's been said. Surah 5, verse 15 of the Quran. O people of the Scripture, Jews and Christians, now has come to you our messenger, Prophet Muhammad explaining to you much of that which you used to hide from the scripture and pass over much. So it says they used to hide something and they used to pass over things. Therefore, it means that the scripture has been changed and altered. Notice you can't pass over something unless you have it, right? Yeah. If, it, if it was lost, yeah. if the Jews no longer had it, they're not passing over it. It's gone. That's Sam already pointed that out. Uh, and then, uh, notice, this is Surah 5, verse 15. This is the same chapter. Later in the same chapter, you have that passage, that passage and those verses that Sam just went through, affirming the inspiration and the preservation and the authority of the Torah <laughs> and the Gospel. So if this 
gosh, guys. I mean, these are the best ones, right? These are the best ones these guys no, have been able to best, come up with. Man. That's all. And by the way, David, this was funny. Gen Z Apologetic says, maybe he's like Joseph Smith. He can translate languages he doesn't even speak. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's, got, yeah. he's got the power. I got the power. <sighs> all right. Um, all right. Should we jump on the next one? Yeah, man. I mean, this is like a walk in the park. Piece of cake, dude. Um, I'm reading a comment here by Abdul Rahman. He says, can you go through your reason for what gives you the conclusion that Muhammad was a false prophet? What of the Bible contradicts the Bible? I don't know what you're saying. It's not our position. Uh, if you if you want if you want our reason that that Muhammad was a false prophet, we have. I mean, we can talk about that all day long. If you're talking about, we don't know what you mean by what of the Bible contradicts the Bible. So was that a is that a miss is that a misprint? Did yeah. You, is that a typo? Probably told us? Meant, yeah, Bible Quran contradicting the Quran. That's probably because I think it, he's getting overwhelmed. He sees. The Quran does say our Bible is uncorrupt. Now he's going to say, well, it doesn't contradict the Bible. I think that's what he meant. But again, and, I don't and, know. And really, that, that's what you'd have to say. You're not, going to, you're not going to be any more lucky trying that than, you know, trying to defend the Quran. I mean, trying to defend the claim that the Quran says our scriptures have been corrupted. Um, you, that's, that's the point of a dilemma, ladies and gentlemen. You're in trouble either way. Either way you go, you're in trouble. Right? And either way you go here, Muslims, your religion is false and you're... you're your prophet is a false prophet. So if you want, if you're asking about the, the dilemma, it, it's, it's pretty easy. Your book affirms the inspiration and the preservation and the authority of our book. Our book says that Jesus is the divine son of God who died on the cross for sins and rose from the dead. So his death, his resurrection, and his divine nature are affirmed repeatedly over and over again, like a beating drum in our scriptures, in our scriptures, Right. But your book tells us to judge by our scriptures. Your book says that God inspired our scriptures. Your book says that no one can change our scriptures. Your book said that they still had the scriptures in the time of Muhammad. Your book says that Christians have no ground to stand upon unless they stand upon this. All right. And yet it completely contradicts your religion. So we've said this a million times. There are only two possibilities. Either Christians have the inspired, preserved, authoritative word of God, or we don't. If we have the inspired, preserved, authoritative word of God, Islam is false because Islam contradicts our book. That's one possibility. The other possibility is we don't have the inspired, preserved, authoritative word of God. If we don't have the inspired, preserved, authoritative word of God, Islam is false because Islam says we have the inspired, preserved, authoritative word of God. So if we have the word of God, Islam is false. If we don't have the word of God, Islam is false. Either way, Islam is false. Why are you still Muslims? Exactly. Why are you still Muslims? I, I'm not aware of a religion in history that self-destructs like that. I mean, that that you could, I mean, just here, here are the claims of the religion. Here, here are the only two possibilities. Either way, the religion is false. If those are the only two possibilities, and either way, the, the religion is false, the religion's indisputably false. Leave the religion. I mean, gosh, I've never seen a religion melt down like that. Yeah. This is this is the Chernobyl. Oof. This is the Chernobyl of religions here. It's just melt. It's, it's just yeah. meltdown, man. It's meltdown. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, that's the idea. If you if you have any if you have any more questions about that, we'd be happy to cover those. Uh, um, but are you right? All right, Sam, you ready to go on? I'm getting scared. You're making me lose my face slowly but surely. I, I don't know how you you survive you survive those uh, yeah, those know, first man. two, Ooh. but you're not going to make it through this next one. Wow! Here we go! Scared. Surprise! Surprise! Surprise, Sam! <laughs> Let's see what it is. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, actually, let me let me go one above this because this is actually. Uh, let's see. All right. Yeah. Okay. This guy's got two. All right. So this guy has. Let me see. This guy has two here. All right. This is a two-parter. Okay. This is a two-parter. Be ready to be embarrassed, Sam. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Embarrass me, please. I need someone to put me in my place. Surat al-Baqarah. Surat al-Baqarah. Oh, boy. Number 279. Oh. Chapter 2, oh, verse 79. Oh, oh, oh. oh. So woe to those who write the scripture with their own hands, then say, this is from Allah, in order to exchange it for a small price. Woe to them for what their hands have written, and woe to them for what they earn. I'll go ahead and keep reading here. Scripture stands for holy Scripture stands for holy books, Bible and Torah. Here's the surahs. Please read Surah Al Baqarah from two seventy five to two eighty, as it completely discusses such people who have corrupted the Bible. 
I would ask David Wood to abide by his promise and take the Shahada, but it doesn't work that way. Islam is only accepted by heart and will. I urge all fellows on this channel to at least read the Quran and the Hadith. Be uh, I wish everyone would read the Quran and the Hadith as well, too. I mean, gosh, yeah. can you imagine if, if the people, everyone on this channel, read the, uh, read through the entire Quran and the Hadith? It's a nightmare, which is why so few people do it. Quran, oh my goodness, horrible, horrible book. Hadith, a little more interesting than the Quran, because you got some history and stuff in there. But uh, read the, at least read the Quran and Hadith before concluding about Islam. And please do not fall for this person's senseless hatred. He doesn't even care about promoting Christianity, but only degrading Islam, as 95% of his content on his channel are just spreading hate against Islam and not promoting the Word of God, whatever he believes it to be. It has been said about such people on the Holy Quran, and that's that's going to be the uh, the next slide, but yeah. we'll, we'll focus on this. All right, Sam. Well, he's uh, he said, sir, 2 verse 79, and... He includes a comment saying, Surah 2, verse 70, by the way, Surah 2, verse 75, ladies and gentlemen, is one of the other common verses, so we'll go ahead and yeah. count that. But he's saying this whole passage, Surah 2, 75 to 280, discusses people who have corrupted the Bible. Do you agree or not, Sam, and are you ready to convert? Yeah, that's it, man. My my days as an Christian apology is over. I'm going to have to go and meditate and reflect on the shock, and I'm really discombobulated, and you've deceived me, David, and I'm really questioning the Christian faith. Some not! Yeah, yeah, sometimes I detect a hint of sarcasm in Sam's voice. Not! Seriously? I even wore a shirt. See, I even wrote it. Guys, I even wore the shirt for the occasion. Seriously? All right. It's, it's, again, I have to say this. It's ironic. Christians, I want you to see the irony here. I don't believe in the Quran. David doesn't believe in the Quran. It is ironic that we're showing this book more respect and assuming that it is clear enough to communicate its point and that it has a context. I don't believe in the Quran. I believe it's produced by a madman that was influenced by Satan. That's my conviction. Now, with that said, I still believe that you can have a book that's not inspired that can still clearly communicate the point that the author or authors intended to convey. And that's what I see happening in the Quran. Not in every part, because there is a lot of incoherent babble in the Quran, yep. and there are contradictions. But yep. here's the thing. Why is it that it's the Muslims who think that the Quran is acontextual, has no context, and it's incoherent babble, when they're supposed to convince us to the contrary? Why do I say that? He, pay, he takes one verse or a section, 75 to 79. He takes a section, 75 to 79, ignores all the verses that came before it, all the verses that came after it, to understand properly what this section means and doesn't mean. What do I mean by what this section cannot mean and what it actually means? I want to start a little earlier because, again, we're going to belabor the point. We're going to take some time because our hope is, as David gave you permission, take these snippets of all the different passages, like do a video with just 279, the response. So that's why we're going to take a little time unpacking it for the benefit of people to see smaller sections of responses to these common texts. If you want the answer, you don't go to chapter 2, verse 75 to 79. You start at chapter 2, verses 40 to 44 to begin with. Now, guys, count with me. How many times this chapter is going to repeat? Muhammad and the Quran confirm what you Jews and Christians have. Muhammad and the Quran confirm what you Jews and Christians have. What you possess, what's in your possession, what you already have, confirming it's completely true, not corrupt. Let's count. Chapter 2, verses 40 to 44. Children of Israel, remember my blessing wherewith I blessed you and fulfill my covenant. And I shall fulfill your covenant and have fear of me, taqwa, of me. Watch this. Believe in that which I have sent down, meaning the Quran, confirming that which is with you. Again, the verb sadaqa, look at any Arabic lexicon. Sadaqa means to confirm something is reliable, trustworthy, to testify that a thing or a person has integrity, is truthful, is reliable. It's to confirm something to be true and reliable. Not to say this person or thing is not trustworthy. So believe that which I sent down. Why? It confirms what is with you. Sam. And be not good. Sam, no, I, I just want to, uh, because the Quran does this, this over and over and over yes. again, telling 
the Jews and the Christians, Jews and Christians, the reason you need to believe in Muhammad is that he is bringing a revelation that confirms the books that you have, right? So yeah. Allah is resting the prophethood of Muhammad on the claim that he is affirming the books that we yes. have. And then Muslims come today and say, he never affirmed the books that you have in your hand. He affirms that the books that you have with you are corrupted. Well, if Allah rests the prophethood of Muhammad on him confirming the books that we have, and you're saying he wasn't confirming the books that we that we have, so much for your prophet, his, enti his argument falls apart. Yeah, yes. And That's therefore, amazing, yeah. Jews and Christians are completely justified we're completely justified in rejecting him because the reason we were supposed to believe in him is that he was affirming our scriptures. By the way, yeah. side note, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life, right? If I come to you and I say, I affirm your book, therefore I'm a prophet. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my entire life, right? If I, if I told you Muslims, Muslims, I affirm your Quran, now believe me as a prophet. You'd understand how stupid that is, right? But exactly. that's, uh, that's one of Allah's main arguments for the authority uh, of his revelation. But I wanted that to sink into people, Sam. Yes. That's and, 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 and by the way, Pay attention. How many times are you going to say, confirm what you have? Confirm what you possess. Guys, count. This is just the first section. This was 41. Now, notice here. This is where it gets really exciting. Do not confound the truth with vanity and do not conceal the truth willing, wittingly, right? <clears throat> and perform the prayer and pay the alms and bow with those that bow. Will you bid others to piety and forget yourselves while you recite the book? Do you not understand? Now, David, help me understand what we just read. Do not confound truth with vanity do not conceal the truth will wittingly and do you call people to piety and you yourselves don't act upon it though you read recite the book now david how could they conceal the truth willingly and be reading the book if they didn't have the truth and the book is corrupted can you help me understand that no, it wouldn't make any sense. If, uh, if if someone like Adnan is right, and yeah, you have a few kernels of truth in uh, in the Gospels that are left over, but other than that, other than that, there are these massive corruptions. Then people who believe in the Bible, they're not they're not de they're not deliberately or willingly being deceptive. They believe that's the word of God. You only you would only know you're being deceptive if you still had some a, a reliable scripture that contradicts your beliefs and that you are therefore concealing and hiding and, and lying about. So, hmm. And that's just the first section of chapter 2. Now, chapter 2, verse 89, folks. Guys, count. I said count with me. How many times this chapter is going to say confirm what you have is true and valid and that scripture that I confirm bears witness I'm a prophet. So, but if you don't believe me, I confirm it and my book confirms it. Here, see. Well, you don't confirm it. You're a fraud. But here, 289. 289, when there came to them a book from Allah confirming what is with them, what is with them, not what they used to have, what they have right now, and they oftentimes prayed for victory over the unbelievers, when there came to them that they recognized, they disbelieved in it, and the curse of Allah is on the unbelievers. Chapter 2, verse 91, and when they were told, chapter 2, verse 91, and when they were told, believe in Allah and what he sent down, they said, and the commentaries say the Jews said this. We believe in what was sent down on us. And they disbelieve in what is beyond that. Yet it is the truth confirming what is with them. Say, why then were you slaying the prophets of Allah in former time if you're unbelievers? If you're truly believers, I'm sorry. Why did you kill the prophets if you're believers? Now notice what the response is when they say to Muhammad, we believe in what we have. We don't believe what you have. You're going to reject what I have when it confirms what you have? Now David, does that... Does it make sense to say what they have is corrupt? When Muhammad just said, are you out of your mind? Why wouldn't you believe my Quran? My Quran confirms your scripture. Would that make sense to make that argument if Muhammad and Allah thought their book is corrupt, corrupted? No, it, I mean, that, that would only make sense if, if their God is a God of complete uh, ir irrationality and contradiction, <laughs> which, which they apparently believe, so... All right, we got a few more, a few more, 290, uh, that was <clears throat> 291, I, I didn't read 291. Yeah, I did, I'm sorry, see, because there's so many I'm even forgetting. All right, 297, say, this is two, chapter 2, verse 97, the previous one was verse 91. Say, whoever is an enemy to Gabriel, he is the one that brought it down upon your heart, Muhammad, by permission of Allah, confirming what is before it. So this Quran confirms what's before it, which they have. It came before, but it's still with the Jews. 
Now, chapter 2, verse 101. Chapter 2, verse 101. When there has come to them, chapter 2, verse 101. When there has come to them a messenger from Allah confirming what is with them. When a messenger confirms what is with them, a party of them that were given the book reject the book of Allah beyond their backs, meaning his Quran, as though they knew it not. And then to 121, to verse 121 and 136, just for the sake of time, right? Those to whom we have given the book, and their commentators will tell you, it's referring to the Jews and Christians. Those to whom we've given the book, read it with true reading. They believe in it, and whoever disbelieves in it shall be the losers. Let me repeat it again. Those whom we've given the book, read it with a true reading and believe in it. But wait, I'm confused. How can they read the book truthfully and correctly and read it the way it's supposed to be read if the book is corrupted and they're reciting a less than reliable scripture? Can you help me understand that, David? Uh, I, I cannot, sir. I give up. All right, you give up. Yeah. Ready, take shahada. The final one, 2.136, say, we believe in Allah and that which has been sent down unto us and sent down unto Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, and Jacob, and the tribes, and that which was given to Moses and Jesus and the prophets from their Lord, we make no distinction between any of them and to whom we surrender. But hold on, Muslims. You do make a distinction. You say that which was given to the prophets, corrupted, can't be found, it's no longer in pure pristine form. But here it says, you are to have the same attitude concerning the previous revelations that you have of the Quran. So if you believe the Quran is uncorrupt, preserved, and you're not to make a distinction between the Quran and other revelations, that means this passage is telling you Muslims, have the same attitude concerning the other revelations. They too are authoritative, uncorrupt, and preserved. But instead, you go against the orders of your God, take snippets of passages from the Quran out of context to make the Quran say what it's not saying. So I hope you guys see the pattern. Do you see the pattern in chapter 2? Chapter 2 repeatedly says, here's the proof of Muhammad's prophethood. Here's the proof of the Quran's divine origin. They both confirm what you Jews and Christians have at that time in your possession. What you have, uncorrupt, pure, authoritative. And I agree, they're the words of God. What else do you need to believe I'm a prophet? So then if this is what the chapter says, both before chapter 2, verses 75 to 79, and after chapter 2, verses 75 to 79, then clearly verse 79 cannot be saying the Bible's corrupted. And we already explained that yesterday. Reread 279 carefully. It says, a party of them wrote the book with their hand and said it is from Allah when it's not from Allah to sell it for a miserable price. So again, let me repeat what I said yesterday and David can come in. Because he's going to make a video with 10 points on this. Number one, it says a party of them, not all of them. Because this is important. Because the same Quran says, says elsewhere, chapter 3, verses 113, 114, chapter 3, verse 199, says that there was another party among the Jews and Christians that did not sell Allah's signs, but believed in his signs and read his book as it was supposed to be read. So number one, it says a party of them, not all of them. So one party at a particular place at a particular time, not everyone. And that makes sense because at that time, the scriptures of the Jews were in the hands of the Jews all over the world and in the hands of the Christians. So because one party may have corrupted the Bible, if we take that interpretation, that doesn't mean all Jews, all Christians corrupted all their scriptures. It's referring to one particular group at one particular location, at one particular moment, and the same Quran says, not all of them are alike. Many of them were reading the book, reciting it, believing it, and reciting it the way it should be recited. So that's number one. Number two, verse 78 and 79 tells us it can't be referring to the Bible. Chapter two, verses 78 to 79. Read 78. 78 says that there is among them a group that are ummiyun, Ummi, what does that mean? If you read what Ummi means in the context of the Quran, it means a group who did not know the contents of the Bible. It doesn't mean illiterate. It means unlettered, unlearned, meaning they did not know the Bible. Well, David, help me understand this. Because contextually, 78 and 79 is referring to the same group. You're going to have to really stretch it to disassociate 78 from 79. 
if it's saying that there was a group who were ignorant of the scripture, who did not know the scripture, that's why they're immuyun, meaning they are unlettered when it comes to the context of the scripture, how then can they corrupt a book that they do not know and are not reading? How can then verse 79 be referring to the Bible when verse 78 tells us that group doesn't know what the Bible says? Can you help me understand the logic? Am I missing something? Yeah, I think uh, wasn't there wasn't there one Muslim commentator who was so desperate to avoid that problem that he translated umiyun as something to do with the mother or something like that? Yeah, 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 I mean, was, yeah. because they understand, right? Yeah, they, they understand. understand. Yeah, it's not making any sense. So if that group in verse seventy eight is the same group of seventy nine, and it's only one group, then they cannot be corrupting the Bible. It must be some book they wrote and passed off as scripture in addition to the Bible. And we have some historical basis for that, because before Muhammad, the Jews codified their tradition and called it the Talmud. That would be a book that they wrote and tried to pass off as the book from Allah. So at the very best, all you're proving is they wrote something, not the Bible. They didn't know the contents of the Bible, so therefore they couldn't corrupt it. They wrote something and tried to pass it off as revelation on equal status with the Bible, and the Jews did do that historically. Orthodox Jews did that. They came up with the Babylonian Talmud and the Jerusalem Talmud, and if you ask a rabbi today, that body codified oral law is just as authoritative as the Torah in their view. So the most that this passage is proving is that a particular group of Jews came up with some book and tried to pass it off as authoritative revelation from God, but had nothing to do with the scriptures in their possession, which Muhammad said, those scriptures, uncorrupt, preserved, reliable, cannot be changed. Yeah, I can I, add more, but I want to give you a chance to say something. No, I'm, I'm fine. Again, I'm going to be making a, a whole video on this, but um, I mean, even you could you go to the Muslim commentaries and they'll say, that this refers to a group of the Jews who were trying to falsify the description of Muhammad that's in the real Torah, and then so they rewrote it to uh, to misrepresent his description so that people wouldn't recognize him, and they said this is the book. Uh, notice, if we if we take that seriously, there's no way that could possibly refer to the corruption of the Torah, right? I can write something right now and say that. Uh, so I can write some. I can uh, rewrite something in the Quran right now to say something it doesn't say. That doesn't affect the Quran anywhere in the world, right? I could convince a few people that I've written the Quran if people really trusted me or something like that, but that wouldn't change the Quran anywhere in the entire world. So for for Muslims to say, yes, according to our commentaries, uh, chapter 2, verse 79, even if we ignore all of the other problems, it refers to someone writing something, writing a false description of the, the prophet who is to come in the Torah, so that it didn't sound like Muhammad, and then saying, hey, this is this is the Torah. And that's what they did. They said, this is the Torah. This is according to Muslim sources. I don't trust these sources. But uh, uh, it, best case scenario, it refers to someone writing something and saying, this is the Torah. How in the name of common sense would that refer to the corruption of anything else in the entire world? Look, I did this, you remember yesterday. Look, Sam. Yes. This is in the Quran. That's it. Quran's corrupted. It's from the Quran. Quran Surah, 15, Surah 115, verse 3. It says, Muhammad was a false prophet. I've just claimed that this is in the Quran. So Shh. notice, I've done exactly what that what Surah 2, verse 79, says that someone did. I did the exact same thing. Are Muslims going to say that the Quran has now been corrupted? No. Are they going to say that any Quran in the world has been corrupted? No. But somehow, if someone were to do that with the Torah, if someone were to write this and say, this is in the Torah, it would somehow magically corrupt all Torahs in the yeah. entire world. Even the ones, even the ones that were before Muhammad, right? So yeah, notice, exactly. Sam, if someone in the 7th century rewrites something, writes something down and says, this is in the Torah, and they're trying to, trying to keep people from knowing that Muhammad's a prophet... Is this going to magically change the Dead Sea Scrolls, which had, which were mm. which were buried in caves centuries earlier? Yeah, uh, you have to right. you have to say one that it, that that writing something uh, writing something and claiming it's from the Torah would magically corrupt every cor every Torah in the possession of Jews in the world, and even ones that are buried in caves. This is some amazing and most and notice Sam 
for Muslims to take that argument seriously and say that this is affirming the text, uh, the textual corruption of the Torah, they have to believe that. They have to believe that if a Jew were to write a false, write something false about Muhammad and write a false description, this would magically corrupt every copy of the Torah in the world and throughout time. And that is so incredibly stupid hmm. that it just it just boggles my mind when we when we read this stuff, man. It's it's amazing. And this is their best, folks. By the way. These are the this is number the one. Muslims are this is yeah. their number one. This is the one I get most. Yeah. They're the ones quoting these verses. We're not making it up. You can see he's giving you the comment section. It's always chapter 2, verse 79, followed by, and you know, it's ironic. It may come up. I don't know, because as David can tell you, I don't know what verses he's going to bring up. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't tell him. Uh, yeah, so I, they're, I, they're, I screenshot him right before we were going to. Matter of fact, that's why we were five minutes late. I was, I was importing the, the screenshots I took. So that's why I... I'm surprised one passage hasn't come up, and I'll tell you what passage. It may come up, chapter 5, verse 48, which is also abused and misused, but we'll wait for that. But yeah, this is their best. It's 279, 514 and 15. I was here in 548 and 378. That's the ones that are typically quoted to show corruption. And then other passages will say it implies it because it denies the doctrines of the Bible. Really? Yeah. Because the Quran denies the doctrines of the Bible means that the Quran is saying the Bible is corrupt? Or is that, again, the argument we've been setting forth that Muhammad in his ignorance confirms the Bible, not knowing the context of the Bible, exposes him and his Quran as frauds. But anyway. Yeah. Um, speak Along those lines of our argument, I'm trying to figure out what this guy is saying. Tom, Tom says, uh, the problem with your Quranic dilemma is that it wants it both ways. That's not fair. Um, I don't know if you're... you're just speaking poorly here, Tom, and you're you're talking about what the Quran says, and the Quran wants it both ways. That that would be a problem. As far as our argument, the Islamic dilemma, it not it's got nothing to do with anything we want, right? We're stating mm -hmm. facts. Fact: the Quran affirms the inspiration and the preservation and the authority of the Torah and the Gospel. The 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 Quran says that Allah revealed the Torah and the Gospel. The Quran says that. No one can change Allah's words. The Quran says that Jews and Christians still had the Torah and the Gospel in the time of Muhammad. Muhammad confirmed this, saying that Jews and Christians still had the Torah and the Gospel. The Jews once brought Muhammad a copy of the Torah, and he said, I believe in you and in the one who revealed you. He spoke directly to the copy of the Torah. The Quran commands Jews and Christians to judge by the Torah and the Gospel. The Quran says we have no ground to stand upon unless we stand upon the Torah and the Gospel. And yet... The gospel and the Torah indisputably contradict the Quran, right? The, the gospel says that Jesus died on the cross. The Quran says that Jesus did not die on the cross, right? So uh, this is indisputable. These are indisputable. These are all we need, right? And those are just based on what the Quran actually says. So it's not us wanting it both ways. What are you? What are you even talking about? Do you know what a dilemma is? The reason I'm asking you that is because in your other comment you said, "Is it possible that when Muhammad was appealing to the Bible, he was arguing ad hominem?" I, I don't know what if you know what ad, ad, ad hominem means instead of attacking the argument you attack the person right and then you use that to supposedly you know do away <laughs> with the argument so it would be it would be like if 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 Sam lays out the Islamic dilemma and someone said you're a Syrian right him being a Syrian has nothing to do with whether the argument proves its conclusion or not right so that would be that would be an ad hominem so how is how is the Quran how is Allah affirming that saying that he inspired the Torah and the gospel and ad hominem. It doesn't make any sense. So, uh, Tom, uh, look up dilemmas, look up fallacies, look up, um, uh, look up ad hominems and things like that, because no one can even figure out what you're saying here. So, uh, j just, and if you, we, we think that the way we state the Islamic dilemma is so utterly clear that if someone can't get it, then there's a problem there. And so when we point out that the Quran affirms our scriptures, but the Quran contradicts our scriptures, and therefore there are only two possibilities. We either have reliable scriptures or we don't. Is that that's true or not, right? Right? Mm -hmm. It's one or the other. We have reliable yeah. scriptures, so we've got unreliable scriptures, corrupted or something like that. If we have reliable scriptures, Islam is false. If we don't have reliable scriptures, Islam is false. Either way, Islam is false. That that's that's not oh, you you're wanting it both ways. I don't know what you're talking about, dude. So, yeah. no, that is that what we're watching, what, what we are saying is the destruction of Islam if this idea ever sinks into the Muslim community and they realize that their book 
affirms other books that completely contradict their book. Right? That's a massive problem. They don't recognize that it's a problem. Why? Because all their leaders and all their apologists keep lying to them and telling them that Surah 279 and Surah 3, you know, all, all, all these, uh, saying that these these verses do affirm the corruption of our of our scriptures. They have to say that because these guys understand this is the destruction of their religion hanging in the balance. They have to convince Muslims that the Quran affirms the corruption of our scriptures if they don't, their religion self-destructs. And so... That's why we're doing this, but it's not it's not a pro it's not a problem with our, our argument. It's a problem with the, what their book says. All right, Sam, you ready to move forward? Let's do it. All right, what we'll are do, we'll do all right. We'll go ahead and uh, uh, do the uh, part two to that one, and then we'll uh, we'll take some comments, and then I've got a couple more screenshots up here. All right, what was the part two here? All, all right, right you went to five thirteen fourteen, which we uh, yeah we've already done seven. yeah we've already yeah. done five fifteen. Uh, but see yeah. if there's anything else you want to add here, sir. Uh, yeah. The Go ahead. Yeah, what are yeah. you saying? Let me go ahead and read them. So, uh, so this is the 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 uh, continuation of uh, the one we just read. But uh, after quoting that, he quotes uh, Surah Al Maida five thirteen to fourteen. But because yeah. of their breach of their covenant, we cursed them and made their hearts grow hard. They changed the words from their right places and forget a good part of the message that was sent to them. Mm -hmm. Nor wilt thou cease to find them, barring a few, ever bent on new deceits, but forgive them and overlook their misdeeds. For Allah loveth those who are kind. From those two who call themselves Christians, we did take a covenant, but they forgot a good part of the message that was sent to them. So we estranged them with enmity and hatred between the one and the other to the day of judgment. And soon yeah. will Allah show them what it is they have done. So... Yeah. That's his. Uh, that's his other shot, and this is another uh, fairly common passage. But Sam, yeah, it is. I've heard it. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> if you read what it says about the Jews, it says something a little more harsher <clears throat> about what the Jews did with their scriptures than it says about the Christians. So let's let me real quickly go over that part. So for their breaking their covenant, we cursed them and made their hearts hard, perverting words from their meanings. Perverting words from their meanings. Now, in case he doesn't like that, I'm going to read Yusuf Ali. Yusuf Ali. This was Arbery. We cursed them and made their hearts grow hard. They changed the words from their right places, actually from their places, and forget a good part of the message. So you could say that here, what the indictment against the Jews is a little harsher because it says they perverted words from their meanings. That's Arbery's translation, right? But now let's see what it says about the Christians. And we and with those who say we are Christians, actually it says Nasara. We took a covenant and they have forgotten a portion of that they were reminded of. So even in the accusation, you see it's not the same. In other words, something said about the Jews, not said about the Christians. I want everyone to pay attention. It is said about the Jews, right, that they <clears throat> perverted words from their meanings. Now, what does that mean? Removed words from the right places. Does that mean textually? Or does it mean, again, they perverted the words, removed them from their right places contextually by their interpretation? Because you can take words out of context and distort their meaning, and in that sense, you're removing words from their right places, meaning their contextual interpretation. Is that what it means, or does it mean the text? But before I even comment on that, that charge is not made in respect to the Christians. So even at best, all you're showing is that Jews corrupted their scriptures at the time of Muhammad. But it can't be all Jews the world over. It would only be the Jews at Muhammad's time doing it. But don't forget, there were Jews scattered all over the then known world that had copies of those scriptures in their possession that these Jews that Muhammad is interacting with had no access to. That's number one. Number two, the Hebrew Bible was also in the possession of the Christians. So are you wanting us to believe that the Jews got the Christians to agree with them, even the Christians living at Muhammad's time, close to Muhammad, that the Jews somehow got the Christians to agree with them. Let's corrupt the Old Testament so that our Old Testament reads the same way, our copies and yours. You actually want us to believe that? When even the Quran acknowledges that the Christians and Jews <clears throat> at the time Muhammad, near Muhammad's vicinity, were at war with each other, enmity towards each other? And you'll find that in chapter 2, verse 113. So again, let me repeat that point. At best, all you're proving again is a group of Jews at the time of Muhammad, in Muhammad's locale vicinity, 
corrupted their copies. But this says nothing about the copies in the hands of the Jews the world over. That's number one. Number two, the Christians living at Muhammad's time, in Muhammad's vicinity, they too had the Old Testament. So do you want us to actually believe Jews and Christians came together and decided to corrupt the Old Testament the same way so their copies would read the same way? Or is this simply desperate and grasping at straws? But that's assuming, by the way, that it's saying that when they removed words from the right places, it means that they changed the, the text, they corrupted the text, as opposed to removing them by their misinterpretation of words taken out of context. Now, how do I know it's the second view, that they're misinterpreting these words by taking them out of context? I just got done reading chapter 5, verses 43 to 48. Chapter 5, verses 43 to 48. Chapter 5, verses 66 to 68. Now, I didn't read 48 because I'm assuming maybe that will come up so we can address it later. But still, in 548, it says, And to you, Muhammad, we sent down the book in truth, confirming what is between his hands, right, and guarding it in safety, preserving it, Muhammad and Ali. Now, I know how Muslims try to spin that to make it mean something it doesn't. Lord willing, if that come up, comes up, I'll address it. But folks... The contextual reading of these passages cannot mean the text is corrupted because later on, Muhammad is telling the Jews, follow your Torah. God has sent down guidance and light in it. If you don't judge by your Torah what you have, you are unbelievers and wrongdoers. And you Christians, follow your gospel. God has sent down guidance and light in your gospel. And if you don't follow it, then you're unbelievers and wrongdoers. What else does Muhammad need to say before Muslims get it that he does not think their scriptures are corrupted, unreliable, but their scriptures are pure, preserved, un incorruptible, unchangeable, and their sin is failing to live up to those scriptures, ignoring much of those scriptures, or misinterpreting those scriptures to agree with their traditions. That's the only honest, consistent interpretation of these passages. If you believe the Quran is contextual, and doesn't contradict itself. Now, if he's focusing on the part forget, because that's what I have had Muslims say. See, they forgot, meaning they corrupted it. Last time I checked, forgetting something doesn't mean you corrupted something. But in Muslim logic, let's go with it. Let me read what it says in reference to the Christians. And when those who say we are Christians, Nasara, we took covenant from them, they have forgotten a portion of that they were reminded of. So... We have stirred up among them enmity and hatred till the day of resurrection, and Allah will surely tell them of the things they wrought. Now notice this. It says they forgot a portion of that which they, re they were reminded of. So number one, they were reminded of it. That means they must be aware of the thing they're being condemned for forgetting. So what does it mean to forget? In the language of the Quran, what does it mean to forget? You don't need to guess. I'm going to read how the Quran uses this term forget. Chapter 7, verse 51. Such as took their religion to be mere amusement and play and were deceived by the life of the world. That day, pay attention, it's the same Arabic word for forget in chapter 7, verse 51. That day we forget them as they forgot the meaning of this day of theirs and as they were wont to reject our sign. So Allah says we will forget them that day as they forgot the day of this meeting with us. One more verse, and I'm going to ask David a question. Chapter 9, verse 67. The hypocrites, men and women, have an understanding with each other. They enjoin evil and forbid what is just and are close with their hands. They have forgotten Allah, so he has forgotten them. Verily, the hypocrites are rebellious and perverse. Now, help me understand logic, David, because remember, I'm not that logical. Allah's My brain doesn't work that way. I'm going to go ahead and cut you off right now. Allah has been corrupted. That's the conclusion. Go ahead. Because they forgot Allah. They forgot Allah, so he's been corrupted. And the day of judgment they forgot. They for, it's that been means, corrupted. It's all corrupted. And, and Allah forgets them. So, I mean, Allah must have amnesia because he they've doesn't been remember them. They've been corrupted too. He doesn't remember. Thank you. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you let the Quran speak, you know what forget means? It's simply the Quranic way of saying they ignored mm -hmm. those parts as if those parts weren't there. Forget doesn't mean, oh, man. Man, you know, I, I swore I there was some Man, what happened? Man. It means they ignored it, they overlooked it, they set it aside. Not they corrupted it or they weren't aware that it existed. That's not how the Quran uses this, this term.
So this is desperate and pathetic, to say the least. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> hey, I had to block shake Dr. D dot. Uh, because it was uh, uh, whoever he, whoever's account this is, he was just cutting and pasting stuff from Ahmed Didat. Uh, totally irrelevant to anything, but just cutting and pasting. And uh, guys, if you're cutting and pasting something, especially if it's completely off topic, to try and distract from what's going on, yeah, I'll generally block you. But I did want to I did want to post uh, I did want to uh, I did want to go ahead and respond to just one so people can see how stupid this is. Um, because I'm guessing this came from, from DDOT himself because this is so stupid. It sounds like something from DDOT. Check this out. Ready, Sam? Ready to have yeah. your ready to have your faith shattered. That's it. I'm about to take you out of, bro. Who went to the tomb on three day? Was Mary alone or Mary with other women? If other women, how many and what were their names? Depends on what gospel you read. Depends on what yeah. gospel you read. Now, now guys, what what is this what is this argument based on? This claim is based on the fact that if you start reading uh, John chapter 20, it refers to Mary, and it's just talking about Mary. Whereas mm -hmm. if you just keep reading, you see what's going on and why this is the stupidest, stupidest exactly. thing ever. And Muslims should be ashamed that they actually have to use nonsense like this. Check this out. Ready? Yeah. John chapter 20. We'll read verse 1. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. Uh-oh, that sounds like Mary Magdalene went there herself. But the other Gospels talk about multiple women going. The other Gospels talk about multiple women going. So this is a contradiction. I don't know. Maybe if we're going to call it a contradiction, we could at least read the next verse. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. We don't know where they have put them. The verse, the, the very next verse, Mary Magdalene says that she wasn't alone. So notice, guys, notice what they mean by contradiction. The reason I'm pointing that out is, it, Muslims, if this is what you mean by contradiction, we can show this all day long from the Quran. Because notice, this would be like, this would be like, uh, imagine you leave and you say, uh, someone asks you what you were doing tonight. You said, oh man, I was, I was watching Sam Shamoon wreck Islam. And then someone else who's watching is asked the same question by the same person. Hey, what were you doing? Oh, I was watching uh, David Wood. And then another person is asked the same question by that same person. Another person says, I was watching uh, David Wood and Sam Shamoon. Following the Muslim reasoning here, that would, be, that would all be contradictory. Oh, ha, huh, you said you were watching Sam Shamoon. And you said you were watching David Wood. But this other guy says he was watching Sam Shamoon and David Wood. You're all contradicting each other. None of those are contradictions. You guys don't understand what contradictions are any more than uh, than our friend Tom understands what what an ad hominem is. All right, and Sam, Surprise, Sam, Sam, David. The reason I'm pointing this out, Sam, is this is stuff that their greatest apologists bring forward. Right? Their greatest apologists wrote this nonsense, and then Muslims go around sharing it, and this somehow bolsters Muslims' faith when, and then they use it to try and distract everyone. From a, a very serious issue, Muslims, your Quran affirms books that contradict the Quran, and your religion self-destructs. Why? Why are you still Muslims when we when we've we've shown that over and over again? My goodness, Sam, this is one. This is a very interesting religion. What do you think? Well, you know what? Uh, this Friday, I already called the local mosque, and the Imam said because it's coronavirus, he's going to make me take shahada via Skype. So I'm ready to become Muslim. I'm sorry, David. You got to. You failed stuff. miserably. You failed miserably. You shattered my heart, dude. That's it. I'm, it's over. All right. Well, I still have a few more. Pa I still have a, uh, I still have two more, uh, two more passages up there. Uh, let's go ahead and take some, uh, uh, some comments from the super chat. Also, Sam, any comments you see that you want to address, sure. uh, you can feel free. Uh, Vedanch says, uh, what does the Quran and the Hadith say about women? Um, that would be, uh, too much. Yeah, Vedanch, just just go to uh, go to DCCI channel. Go to DCCI. I just did a live stream on that with Hatun Tash, um, and we, we we do have plenty of videos on women in Islam. But yeah, uh, j just give the just give the brief overview, Sam. Let, let's let's run it down. Uh, if they get out of line, you can beat them. Yep. Four thirty four of the Quran. Yep. You can hire that. You can hire. Uh, I'll go ahead and ask you, and you answer. Can you hire prostitutes? Definitely you can. You can go to chapter 24 of the Quran and read verse 33 about it. It talks about it. Yep. 
Um, and then 424 in the Hadith religion talks about muta, but that's form of prostitution. Yep. All right. If I, let's say I, uh, you know, I go out and fight a battle and then I, uh, I capture a woman in the battle. What can I do to her? You can take her as booty and have consensual sex. Not you can rape her even if she's married. That's chapter 4 verse 24 again. Um, it's in, That's even if, even if. She's married. Yeah. Even if she's married. All right. Adultery, um, yeah, rape, yeah. Uh, what's the, what's the, what's the minimum age for marrying and having sex with a girl? If you can find that in the Quran, good luck. There is no minimum age. Chapter 65, verse four, all it says is those women that you've married and consummated marriage who are prepubescent because they haven't had their menstrual cycle, you can divorce them, wait three months and they can be married off. Good luck finding a minimum age in, in the Quran. All right. Um, so what, what, what do you, what do you. What else? Anything else on women in Islam that our friend needs to know? What what do what do what's the difference between men and women when it comes to paradise? Oh yeah. Men are going to have a bevy of beauties that are firm, swelling, breasted bevy of beauties with with big eyes and it gets graphic in the hadith where they're going to spend all eternity deflowering them and the prize of a good muslim woman if she's good and she passes the test she'll be part of the company of these huris these whores that men will have the pleasure of deflowering forever and ever and ever that's her honor that's her pleasure all right so uh anyway hope uh hope that answers the question but uh, andrew larson says these Muslims need a good book on logic. I recommend The Art of Argument by this dapper dude named Aaron Larson. Oh, this is a comment from Aaron Larson. That's funny. Uh, it's available on Amazon. Yes, uh, that would definitely help. Um, Antonio Castro says, uh, proud to contribute. Thank you. Solitary Emmy has the uh, laughing fox super yeah. sticker. Uh, and by the way, but just don't forget this one. He needs to know too. Chapter two, verse two twenty-three of the Quran. It says that your women are your field, your your tilth, your tillage. You can plow into them any way you deem fit. Mm -hmm. That's chapter two, verse two twenty-three. Woman, you are the pillage, the field that a Muslim man can plow into any way he deems fit. So that's the beauty of the Quran. And you had some early disputes on uh, exactly what that meant between uh, yes. be even yes. between yes. Ibn yes. Ibn Masud and Ibn Abbas, coming up a little bit of a different interpretation there yeah. on what what you're allowed to do to your wife. Yeah, I kept the G rated. So, yeah. uh, JP Ehrman, I wonder if that's Bart Ehrman's cousin, uh, says, Thanks for all that you both do. Let the Assyrian have half. <laughs> Get half the super chat, Sam. George. Thank you, sir. And I love Bart Ehrman, so thank you. No I'm kidding. But. George Wagner says, uh, By heart and will means my feelings and pride. Um, not sure what that means. Uh, Sparky yeah, Master, right. Sparky Master says, oh, Here's one for you, Sam. Sparky Master says, I am late to stream, was watching from beginning, and I am always dealing with emotional, demonic thoughts, and yeah. was begging God to remove them, and why they keep happening. The next yeah. second, the next second later, Sam mentioned how the devil was attacking him. God bless. Yep. I mean, that God answered your prayer, and I want you to read a verse, brother. Go to 2 Corinthians 12, verses 7 to 10. 2 Corinthians 12, verses 7 to 10. 10. May the Lord Jesus use that passage to comfort you. We're all in a battle. We're all being attacked. But by the blood of Jesus, we will be more than conquerors as the Spirit fills us in Jesus' name. <clears throat> Rachel Diaz said, uh, could you guys recommend any good online, possibly interactive Bible and apologetics classes, schools, studies, etc.? I've learned a lot from you. Thank you. Uh, if you're talking about online apologetics programs, I believe that Biola... Houston Baptist and Liberty all have online apologetics courses. And um, uh, some of them have different levels. Like uh, Biola, you can uh, you can go through the program at, at Biola where uh, you have to watch a bunch of lectures and you have assignments on, on it and they, they have sort of certification program and so on. Um, but also, if you want to get a master's degree in apologetics, you, you can. So it'll kind of depend on the level you want to uh, go to. But yeah, uh, lots of, there are also lots of lots of ministries that have various programs. You can enter like a, a Frank Turek's Cross Examined and, and so on. They, they have their, their various programs and so on. So yep, plenty of uh, plenty of options available. Um, Cheryl R with the super sticker. Skull Super, we already went over that one. That was the one in uh, interesting passage in, in Bukhari. 
Uh, Marcia Doden says, sorry to disturb. Why the God from the Old Testament is so cruel compared with Jesus? By cruel, I mean he destroyed the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. He drowned the Egyptians who, try, who tried to capture and escaping Jews, uh, etc. Um, Mercia, uh, you have different covenants in the Bible. You have uh, rules, different rules that people are supposed to follow. But at, at the end of the day, the, the, the takeaway message is God is patient, but he will eventually, if you are in stubborn rebellion, he is eventually going to judge you. And he can judge entire groups and entire nations. And God, Old Testament or New Testament, he puts up with stuff for a long, 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 long time. And then he judges. And uh, that would be so. I, you, I don't think we're we're talking about different <clears throat> different gods here. If she's interested, you've done a debate on this with Shabir Ali, and also we did a talk on ABN on violence in the Old Testament. So look for it, Sam Shimon David Wood, violence in the Old Testament. It was two hours. You'll get a lot of information. Mm -hmm. Um, Alwyn Furtado says, hello, David and Sam. I'm a big fan, but I want to discuss Hinduism with you. Is that possible? Uh, no. Yeah. I'm why, 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 in the name, why in the name? Would you, yeah, no. yeah. And I'm not saying because I'm not interested in the conversation. I'm saying, why would anyone want to discuss Hinduism? I mean, yeah, unless you're, like unless you're, unless Alwyn, you're saying that you're a Hindu and you want to try and uh, convert us or something like that. Uh, Good luck with that. But if, if you just mean you want to discuss someone's perspective on, on yeah. Hinduism, you've got Hindu historian in the in the in the chat most evenings. So you yeah. can have all the discussions in the world on on Hinduism. That's right. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's but, if, if he, but, but, uh, I just want to say if you're if you if you're if you're if you're asking our view of it, it's just not something we study and we tend not to discuss things that we don't study. Right. Like, yeah, so don't 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 ask me about Buddhism, Hinduism. Um, basically any Asian religions because I just don't study them. In other words, I don't, I don't talk about them because why would anyone respect my opinion on any of this stuff unless I, unless I study it first? So, yeah, yeah. just, uh, just to say, someone is asking you, who is Halal Hogan? That was me. I played Halal Hogan and someone gave you super chat for me to do Halal Hogan. So I'll do it before we end okay. by the grace of God. And then again, my two girls are listening. Love you girls. Jesus bless you. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, Let's see. Uh, Josue Neves says, I love my Muslim friends. May God set them free. Amen. Rebel Mark says, Amen. God bless all Amen. in the chat. Amen. Lucis MMV says, we use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and destroy false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. Amen. Uh, so that's 2 Corinthians. And uh, guys, uh, keep in mind, all, all logic is is God's logic. You know what I mean? It's a, the, the, the logical the logical order of, of reality is grounded in God, just like the mathematical uh, order of reality and the moral order of reality is grounded in God. And so when we point out, when we point out something like the Islamic dilemma, this, I believe this is, this is God just showing how false this religion is. Uh, the theistic leaning agnostic says, uh, please do more live streams with each other. Uh, unfortunately we probably will. Steven, yeah, Steven yeah, universe, Steven universe says, God bless, uh, clash with spreeces says, uh, thank you, David. Jesus is real. Um, or why are we here? <laughs> it says Jesus is real or why are we here? I actually like that. Je Jesus or nothing, man. Um, George Wagner says the Quran is Allah's best book. Yeah. Give him a break. It's also his first one. Yeah. By the way, David, you got a troll, Alvin Wright, saying, "Hey Sam, what is the name of your daughters? I want to talk to them." So he's a pedophile. Okay, guys, block him. If uh, is, is is there anyone? Uh, is there any Alvin mods Wright, over yeah. there? Is there any mods over yeah, there? Because yeah. I'll block him. Yeah, yeah. He's. I mean, no respect. He's uh, preying on kids. He's been preying on women. He keeps asking them for Alvin their Wright. name. Yeah, it's a sicko. Yeah, Alvin Wright. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he'll oh, make a good Muslim. Oh, it says he's already been hidden. Why am I seeing his comments? Yeah. Do you still see his yeah. comments? Oh, never mind. No, oh, it stopped. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, good job, Bugs. Um, what else we got here? All right, we'll go through a few more, and then I've got a, I've got a couple more. Let's see. Abdul Rahman Muhammad said something nice to us. He goes, "I appreciate Sam's contribution." So he's a seems like to be a civil Muslim. So praise Jesus yeah. for that. The Lord bring him salvation. Uh, Feder Fencer says, "Hey guys, what about the way Shabir responds to the Islamic dilemma, which I've seen bits of in your debates? Would he be worth debunking?" Uh, no, Shabir, sure. Shabir goes with the exact same thing that, that we've seen, right? Uh, so Shabir, when, when I, in my 
debates in, in one of my four debates I had on ABN. I've had nine debates with Shabir, but um, he he goes through a two verse seventy nine, right? So he goes just like the rest of these guys, um, and yeah, so it's just it's it's very it's a very similar position. Shabir normally tries to have a more sophisticated position, but he's still arguing that the Quran is uh, is affirming our corrupted scriptures. So. Um, yeah. Let's see. Walter says, what a shame they can't respond with the Quran. Amen. I mean, they are. I mean, technically, they are responding with the Quran. They're saying, oh, here the Quran says it's just uh, it's just complete nonsense. All right. Let me see if any more popped up. Other than that, we will. Uh, are you ready to look at a couple more, Sam? Yeah, go ahead. I'm here. And really, I forgot what was on here. Uh yeah. Wait, let me see. We had a, we did have a few, uh, a few more super chats. I wanted to see where the halal Hogan one was. Uh, okay, so Vidan mm -hmm. said, "OMG, Mr. Phil Fox said Sam Hulk Hulk Hulk." Yeah, still guy. Yeah, that was the gentleman. Chooks Dogzilla sure. hot uh, with the uh, with the chicken and the thumbs up super sticker. Um, Aaron Larson said, "You mentioned apologetics programs. Don't forget to mention Jay Smith's group program specifically versus islam oh yeah so th that's that's the other thing for people who are interested in, in an apologetics program kind of depends on what you're interested in right kind of depends on which which direction you want to go in so let that uh let that be your guide and caleb lewis said uh brother sam why did jesus christ buried in a yeah, in a bar yeah. Barrow borrowed tomb yeah he meant borrowed tomb oh borrowed yeah. Yeah. Because well, yeah, because that was close by, and it's Passover, and sun's going down, and you have a guy with a new tomb, and Jesus was respected, and they didn't want him to be thrown in the common grave, the common, you know, the common dump, uh, where the Romans would dump their bodies, and so they put him in a tomb. So, anything you wanted to add to that, Sam? No, you did. It. Yeah, that's the reason. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and also to signify that our Lord was so humble, and came and <clears throat> lived a very poor and humble life and depended on the mercy and grace of others to provide for him. Because he even said in Matthew 8, 19 and 20, foxes have holes, birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so guys, uh, again, if, 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 that, if that's an issue why Jesus was put in a borrowed tomb, Jesus wouldn't have had a tomb there. And exactly. so it's, it's, uh, yeah. they're Nazareth. not, yeah, they're, they're not going to be running. They're not going to be rushing out to do, you know, take him, take him to Nazareth and stuff like this and get him a new tomb there and stuff like that. They're exactly. not going to, not going to be doing that stuff. He's just been crucified. The Romans would just toss bodies in a, you know, a, a, a sort of common grave or just let animals rip them apart. People who respected Jesus did not want that to happen to the miracle working Jesus. And so, a wealthy man said, "You know, I've got a tomb over here. I just had to let's let's put him in there." That's right. Three days later, fulfilling. Three days later, tomb fulfilling was, Isaiah fifty-three nine. Yeah. Three days yeah. later, tomb was empty. Never to be occupied again. Yep. Never to be occupied. All right, all right. You ready, Sam? I, Go ahead. I've bro. only got two. I've only got two more up here, but these two are going to rock your world. Yeah, I'm telling. You, I already have a meeting with a sheikh uh, this Friday. Surprise, sheikhi. But go ahead. Prepare to have your confidence ripped to shreds. Hey, uh, we had Monica Furtado in the in the uh, super stickers. That's two Furtados. Are there, is there a husband and wife Furtados there? I saw I saw two Furtados tonight. That's a rare enough name that I would think that's uh, is that, related. Is that the is that the singer that sings? I'm yeah. like a bird. I'm only fly away. I don't know. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, Cheryl, Cheryl said, uh, Cheryl said, need slow mode, please. The spamming is horrific tonight. Sorry to the 99% uh, percent, uh, uh, of, of, of followers. Yes, uh, Cheryl, that is a, that's a, a problem that's brand new. Uh, YouTube just completely canceled classic, which I used. I use, I use the classic studio and I knew how to change the slow mode on the classic studio but then they change it and i didn't know how to so i know now i know now but so yeah that'll be fixed by next live stream but uh yeah it was only a problem now just because they just canceled it they have, they've apparently been phasing it out and i was like in the last group to have it completely canceled but yeah now they have the new studio 
the now they have the new studio the old one is out but yeah i only knew how to cancel it and, and, for, and for real it sucks because the new one seems like 10 times as difficult to use the old one everything was right there okay here's how you do this here's how you do this here's how you do this now they're like 10 different pages of all sorts of nonsense that you have to go to to, to set up a live stream uh anyway but yeah that'll be fixed for next time sorry about that and all the uh all the trolls trolling all right sam yeah here we go be prepared to have your confidence in That's everything it, your confidence Shut in all reality is about to be shaken here that's it. Shada, there you go. Shada, shada. Ahmed Nasir says, John 525 says the dudes who hear Son of God will live. I doubt it means Jesus, peace be upon him, will raise them from the dead. So Sam, uh, now keep in mind, he goes on, but he's responding to my video because in my video, in my video, um, in my video, I point out uh, how Muslims demand an, une an unequivocal statement. They demand an unequivocal statement when all over, all over scripture, Jesus is doing things and claiming things about himself that only make sense for God to claim him. So Ahmed actually starts off his comment by saying that he doesn't think this means Jesus raises the dead. So they hear his voice, but it doesn't mean that Jesus is raising them from the dead, and therefore Jesus is not the resurrection. What do you what do you think about that? Oh uh, well, I mean you you understand how pathetically bad that is. But if he wants something where Jesus doesn't say hear the voice of the Son of God, and that Jesus does it here, John six thirty nine forty. Let's let's meet him on his own ground. Mm -hmm. I mean, a, a blind man blind man can say, oh yeah, I see. Jesus is the one raising them by the power of his voice. But, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm charitable, David. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. John 6, 39 to 40. And this is the will, John 6, 39 to 40. This is the will of the one who sent me, that I should lo not lose anything of what he gave me, but that I should raise it, I should raise it on the last day. And then verse 40, for this is the will of my father, that everyone who sees the son and believes in him may have eternal life. And I shall raise him up on the last mm -hmm. day. Do you get any clearer than that, David? Yeah. So so basically putting all of this together, you have in John chapter 5, uh, you have in John chapter 5, for just as the father <laughs> raises the dead and gives them life, even so the son gives life to whom he is pleased to give it. So that's in the context of raising the dead. So just yeah. a couple verses later. Just a couple verses later, when he, when Jesus says, uh, Very truly, I tell you, a time is coming and now has come when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. For as the Father no, has... Mean uh, yeah, so, and so if you put that in, into <laughs> together with uh, with what Sam said, that, that he's going to raise them. Uh, notice, Sam, notice, Sam, Ahmed just doesn't like the idea that Jesus is the one raising the dead at the resurrection. Why? Because according yeah, to the Quran, Allah is the one who raises the dead at the resurrection, right? So he understands the problem, but he wants to deny it. He wants to reject it. And so that's just what you have to do. All right. So now we can get to his actual claim. You've got, uh, you've got, you've got some overlap here, but he's got uh, Surah 2, verse 59. And so, guys, uh, Sam went through the entire context of Surah 2. Uh to show the problems here. So now you have, we've already been through uh, 275 to 77. I'm surprised they didn't include 290, I mean 279 there. But uh, he's got 259 and finally Quran chapter two, verse 140 is talking about corruption in previous scriptures as in Bible and Torah. So you've got it there. Now you've got these additional ones, Sam. You got Surah 2 yeah. verse 59 and Surah 2 verse 140. Okay. Uh, you might as well go ahead and quote yeah. those because he doesn't actually quote them. Yeah, okay, now this is where I'm, I'm going to get discombobulated. These mm -hmm. sessions have done irreparable brain damage. I don't think I'm going to recover because here's 2140, David. Mm -hmm. Or say you that Abraham and Ishmael and Isaac and Jacob and the tribes were Jews or Christians. Say, do you know best or doth Allah? And who's more unjust than he who hides a testimony which you receive from Allah? Allah is not unaware of what you do. Again, like I said, this is going to cause me irreparable brain damage. How do you hide something you don't have, yeah. David? How do you conceal something you don't have? Uh, I help, honestly, I, maybe I'm, not, I'm missing it. Maybe I'm blind. If I hide something, doesn't it mean I have it? Yeah, that sounds like it. 
Okay, I don't know, man. And then 259. Hang on, hang on. Let, let, let's, just, let's just quote this one more time just to make sure. Yeah. Um, let's see. I'll quote, uh, I'll, let's see, I'll quote, uh, I'll quote Yusuf Ali here. Or do you say that Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, and the tribes were Jews or Christians? Say, do you know better than God? Ah, who is more unjust than those who conceal the testimony that they have from God? But God is not unmindful of what you do. Well, Sam, I have to say, you're right. That if you're concealing the testimony, if you're yeah. concealing the testimony, then you have the testimony. You're concealing it. If you, if you, if you, if obviously, if the Bible had been corrupted centuries earlier by the Apostle Paul and the Council of Nicaea, you're not, you're not concealing you the testimony. It, yeah. You don't have it, right? But this is assuming that you're concealing something. And notice, notice, every Muslim on the planet. Every Muslim on the planet believes there are other Muslims who are doing this, right? Um, Muslims will say that Ahmadis are doing this, right? That they're, they're, they're concealing what Allah has revealed about Muhammad being the last guy and that you're not supposed to believe in any guy afterwards, right? Uh, Sunnis will say that Shias are doing this. Shias will say that Sunnis are doing this. Um, people will say that ISIS is, is corrupting the message, changing the message and ignoring that Allah tells them to live in peace with everyone, right? All Muslims are saying that other Muslims are concealing something that they have from God. And what do Muslims say? Well, in this case, in this case, it refers to the gospel, doesn't say the gospel, uh, but here it's got to refer to the corruption of the gospel. They would never in a million years say, up, oh, someone, uh, someone concealed something from the Quran, therefore the Quran has been corrupted. Suddenly, if you're talking about, if you're talking about some other book, yes, someone concealing something mean, this means the scripture has been changed and corrupted. This, what does this religion do to people, Sam? What does it do? It's damaging me. It's a, I'm, I'm suffering irreparable brain damage. It's so horrible that, yeah, that we even have to look at this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Dave, you want, you're going to laugh. And, you're, and by the way, David can say that me and him are looking these up for the first time. I didn't know what passages he was going to yeah. cite. So again, or yeah. the Muslims, yeah. Yeah. The, so, so, make so, yeah. Clear. This, is, this, is, this is Sam being caught completely off guard with these. Guard, yeah. Now, here's where I don't know to laugh or cry. He quotes 259. Guys, this one you got to listen to. If you really want to see that Islam's days are numbered by the power of Jesus Christ, who is God Almighty, the Almighty Son of God, who's who's alive, who's real, and he's almighty to save Muslims from the darkness of Islam for the glory of his name, by the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus be glorified. You want to see the Islam's days are numbered? Let me read 259, and then I'm going to read the context. Here's what he quoted, 259. Chapter 2, verse 59. But those who did wrong changed the word which had been told They changed the word. They changed the word, oh, Sam. They changed it. It's done. It's corrupted. Ball game. They gospel. Gone. Done. Convert. Oh, but David, when I read the context, you're going to sit there. You're probably going to pass out from shock. What is this referring to? But those who did wrong changed the word which had been re told them for another saying, and we sent down upon the evildoers wrath from heaven for their evil doing. Now, guys, let me tell you who this is referring to by reading just from 57, and I'm going to read to 60. And we caused the white cloud to overshadow you and sent down on you the manna and the quails, saying, Eat of the good things wherewith we have provided you. They wronged us not, but they did wrong themselves. And we said, Go into this township and eat freely of that which is therein and enter the gate prostrate and say, Repentance, we will forgive you your sins and will increase reward for their right doers. But those who did wrong, changed the word which had been told them for another saying. And we sent down upon the evildoers wrath from heaven for their evil doing. And when Moses was asked water for his people, we said, David, it's talking about the Israelites at the time of Moses in the Exodus as they're about to enter Canaan. It's saying those people heard what Allah said and twisted his words and said something in place of what they heard him say, not write down. So if we follow the logic, that means from day one, when the Torah is given to Moses, it was corrupted irreparably from day one in the presence of Allah and Moses. Well, then uh, I guess that would be corrupted then. In Moses' presence. Right there. With Allah there. Yep. In a white cloud. Uh -huh. Where they hear him. Uh, and guys, it's not talking about what was written. It's saying they took what they heard from Allah and misinterpreted it. It misinterpreted saying, hey, this is what Allah really said. And Allah said, oh, yeah? You're going to take what you heard me say? Now let me strike you dead. Mm -hmm. At the time of Moses, 
So if I, if I believe what he's saying, it's the Torah. That means Allah was powerless even when he sent down the Torah from preserving it. He was utterly powerless because they're corrupting it in front of his sight and he could do nothing to save the Torah while it was being sent down to Moses. They corrupted it in his presence, showing the Israelites were more powerful than Allah. Now, David, if Allah was utterly incapable of protecting the Torah as it was being sent down afresh, the Israelites were corrupting it in his presence. What guarantee can the Muslims give me that the same thing hasn't happened to the Quran? Well, Sam, you obviously don't understand Allah very much. If, if we take these Muslims seriously and we believe that Allah was completely uh, uh, incapable of protecting his word from the very beginning, maybe he was just a baby at the time. And then later he grew up and was able to actually reveal the Quran uh, at the beginning. But then he started, you know, losing his faculties. He got a little senile and that's why he stopped being able to communicate what he wants. And that's why he keeps saying over and over again that he's affirming our scriptures when really he's trying to undermine them. Like even 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 this verse, it doesn't sound at all like he's talking about the corruption of our scriptures. It's, yeah, it's not a book. It's what they this heard a book. him say. Yeah. They say, repent, say forgiveness, and they twisted it. It's saying what they heard, they twisted by the way they passed on that word from Allah they heard. That's the context. Yeah, so, and it says they were punished for it. Yeah, so guys, uh, n notice Sam, we gave these guys over a week. We gave these guys, we gave these guys over a week to come up with their best stuff. And it's stuff like this. And I, I t again, I told, I knew what they were going to do, right? They're all going to go to lame Muslim websites and look up verses. And there's, there'll be a list. These are the verses that refer to the corruption of the earlier scriptures. And it, what's amazing, what's amazing, Sam, if I were to, if I were to go to my, uh, let's suppose that, let's suppose that I, you know, I was a young Christian and I don't know anything about Christianity and, and I want some answers. If I were to go to Christian apologists and they were to give me answers and the answers were completely deceptive like this yeah. and I was just cutting and pasting their answers. And then I went out and used those answers and I got completely embarrassed by, by, by non-believers who just said, can you even read the passage? Dude, can you actually read the surrounding verses? This isn't saying one word about this. I would not keep going back to those same dudes, but here's what's amazing yeah. about Muslims. No matter how many times their apologists completely lie to them, no matter how many times it happens, they keep going back to them. Oh, tell us more. Tell us more, Zakir Naik. You've lied to us thousands of times over and over again like a beating drum, but, but we believe we're still getting the truth from you. It's like they can do no wrong. You know what I mean? And guess what? People like Zakir Naik know that they know it people like adnan rashid these guys know their crowd and so there's no accountability they can just keep spouting total nonsense they can keep making things up all day long they know they will not lose their following it's yeah, amazing fortunately yeah it's demonic like i said there's it's something demonic, more right. than physical it's spiritual demonic satan but the blood of jesus is more powerful lord jesus use these shows our meager efforts to bring muslims to saving faith in you by the power of your almighty spirit and strengthen us in, in union with you. We love you, Lord Jesus. That's our prayer. Muslims, we want you to get saved. We want you to escape the darkness of Islam because put arguments aside. Muslims, until the Lord comes, we're going to die. Are you certain you want to die in this religion in light of all the inconsistencies, contradictions, problems, and dilemmas, and in light of your own scholars misquoting the Quran, misinterpreting the Quran, twisting the Quran to deceive you? Do you want to gamble your everlasting soul on such a religion with such flimsy evidence? I hope not. I hope not. Um, all right, let's take a couple more super chats and then we'll go with the last one. I don't even remember what it was. I just yeah. screenshotted the ones that, that Muslims really thought were great. Yeah, just to tell you, even people are getting damaged. Glory to God, we had like up to 2,000 and 1,500 and people were still 1,200, which is good. Mm -hmm. But man, they're getting tired. Like, dude, is this yeah, your Sam, best? Yeah, Sam. Uh, and you know what? You know what I'm going to do? I, I can't help myself. Because it's so difficult getting a point across to Muslims, and, and this is a point about methodology, right? Like, you guys approach us, and we can show you over and over again where Jesus is making claims that no one should God, no one but God should ever make. Even according to your own Muslim sources, no one but God should be making these claims. Jesus is making these claims about himself left and right. If he's just a, if he's just a mere prophet, he is, like your God, the worst communicator in all of history, right? Hmm. So... Yeah. So anyway, so it's we can point that out. The Muslims will say, no, give us an unequivocal statement, meaning one that we cannot reinterpret. 
knowing that they can reinterpret anything, right? No matter how clear Jesus says something, they can reinterpret it. Right? Yeah, yeah, sure. They can reinterpret it. So that's the point. We're trying to get a point about methodology across. Well, guess what? We can do this all day, right? We just picked one issue and they're in like full panic mode, right? You got Muslims, uh, you got Muslims all across the internet posting videos, trying to respond to this simple little thing where I just sat down and I said, okay, here's a challenge. Give me one unequivocal verse where Allah says that the gospel has been corrupted. And you see the backflips and the gymnastics and my goodness, again, Adnan's Rashid, I can make probably 10 to 15 videos just out of Adnan's seven minute video. I could probably make 10 to 15 videos showing how he has destroyed Islam. It's like, I'm so desperate to answer David's question that I don't care if I'm burning the entire kingdom of Islam to the ground. He just doesn't care, right? He's so he's so desperate. Well, guess what? I could do this all day long. You know what we're going to do next week, Sam? What, what is it? You know what we're going to do next time? What is it? Maybe, Tommy, maybe, maybe this weekend. I'll do it again. Muslims, in the Quran, your God says that we find Muhammad mentioned in our scriptures. <laughs> Give us yeah. one unequivocal, <laughs> one unequivocal statement in the Bible that says your 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 Muhammad is a true prophet. One unequivocal one unequivocal statement from the Bible. That's what you do. You say, give us one unequivocal statement from your Bible. Okay, well, you give us one unequivocal statement from your Bible. Obviously, if Muhammad is so important and the Quran is affirming it and resting Muhammad's prophethood on his confirmation, his affirmation in our scriptures, obviously there's going to be at least one, at least one clear, unequivocal, unambiguous prophecy about the coming of your prophet. Isn't that right? So, Sam, yeah. I'll, I'll go ahead and put out that video and it'll yeah, be titled... So It'll be titled, Another Question No Muslim Can Answer. And then they'll scramble for that one. And eventually they'll start realizing, wait a minute, maybe we need methodologies that wouldn't destroy us if Christians applied them to us. Right? Yeah, All right. That's what we want to do. It. Let's do it, bro. All right. We're going to look at this. Uh, we're going to look at this last one, but we have a few more super chats here. Um, uh, Zach1237 says, what do you say about St. John of Damascus on Islam? Um, I still haven't read his, his main work, but in, in the like articles and stuff I read on him, like summarizing yeah. his argument, uh, St. John seems like the man to me, dude. Yeah, me too. I think he's a warrior, a saint, a soldier of Jesus Christ who's glorified in the presence of Jesus. Praise God. By the way, just uh, that tells you guys. Jesus is alive. He's risen, can never die. He's almighty over creation. And Jesus has been faithful to be raising up soldiers in all generations to destroy all ideologies and worldviews set up by men or Satan under, or men un influenced by Satan to stop people from the gospel. Jesus has been raising up his soldiers from day one. Mm -hmm. So that's how faithful and good Jesus is. It is Jesus that raised up a John of Dam Damascus, Damascene in eighth century and has been raising them up and he'll keep raising them up and empower them by his spirit to save people from Satan and his lies because Jesus loves us more than we can imagine. He loves his creation. We love you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and faithfulness. Help us to be good and faithful to you and forgive us, Lord, when we fail you. Praise his name. Uh, I like the way St. Saint, Saint John uh, argues. He would say, uh, you know, Muslims uh, accuse Christians of committing shirk or associators right and uh, he calls he calls muslims mutilators yeah, right? for, I love that. For, yeah, yeah. for trying to chop god down to their size he calls them mutilators of god they call us associators uh he calls them mutilators that's pretty funny uh mm -hmm. monica Furtado with the uh super sticker there cheryl r oh already went through that uh tatiana j says sam you can't block me because i already blocked you and then she has a couple thank you tatiana and tatiana by the way just for record tatiana is an assyrian a Syrian like me, uh. warrior princess who loves Jesus. She loves Jesus, and she go, She knows how to give it back to me. No matter what I say to try to get under her skin, she ignores me like um, the wind. In fact, I sent her some messages on Facebook. She hasn't even looked at it because she don't give me the time. And when I say time of day, I'm talking about a sister. Mm -hmm. Don't misunderstand me. As a sister. <laughs> yeah, I don't want people to think no. But she's a Syrian. She's a warrior, Tatiana. Booyah. All right. Uh, and she also said, Dave, give half to Sam's daughters. So, Sam, if your daughters are still watching, they got uh, they got some super chat funds coming. Um, Joe, nevertheless, says, great work, fellas. I was raised Catholic, but now a born-again Christian. After I started to do my research, great content. Uh, Toa Tui said, the Hare Krishna steal all our arguments for God and apply it to Krishna. 
and say Krishna yeah. is Jesus' father. It's so annoying. Sorry, it's not related, but thanks for all you do. Uh, lots of Muslims are doing that now with like uh, William Lane Craig's arguments, right? They'll, they'll, they're, they're using William Lane Craig's uh, apologetics for the existence of God and yeah. Muslims are using them. The problem is they don't have the same philosophical background that Craig uses, so they'll copy without actually understanding what in the world he's talking about. They're not nearly as smart as William Lane Craig. And so they're using it, and, but then if they're challenged, they just don't understand as much as what they're saying. And by the way, David, I want you to confirm this because I heard it from you because philosophy, I haven't delved into that. Is it not true? Because Muslims like to claim everything as their own invention. Yeah. Is it not true? Even the Kalam cosmological argument comes out of a Christian background that the Muslims took over and developed, and then Craig has now perfected it to a T. So does it come from Muslims, or did it come from a Christian background? Uh, yep, yeah, part of it, part of it came, uh, I think it was the 5th century, yeah, part of it was was was, pre was, was before the Muslim philosophers adopted it, but uh, um, a sort of heretical Christian argued yeah. that the universe can't be eternal the universe has to be it has to have a beginning and that's based on the impossibility of of crossing an actual infinite amount of time you'd never get to the present moment if you had to pass an infinite in order to get here and yeah. then uh i think the muslim contribution to that was to say well if it had a beginning uh, then you know if, if it had a beginning then it must have a cause and therefore and therefore that that cause would be god yeah. and so uh and by the way, I'm not saying Muslims haven't contributed. What I'm saying is this is just part of reality. Mm -hmm. We build on the information that comes before us. So the Christians took what the Greeks wrote, built on it. The Muslims took mm -hmm. it from the Christians, and then Europe took it from the Muslims, and voila. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to be clear. Yeah, no, it, it is an issue because Muslims want to claim that they that they invented everything, right? <laughs> like like the, the same thing with algebra, right? Al-Jabr, the Muslim mathematician, he yeah. he helped algebra— Right, he helped algebra, but if you ask any Muslim what happened, he invented algebra. That's nonsense. Yeah. It's nonsense. The Egyptians, no, I've heard the, that. the Egyptians did algebra. The uh, the Greeks did algebra. Uh, the Babylonians did algebra. The Indians did did algebra. There, you had ver, uh, you had uh, versions of algebra all over the place. This guy did something with it, and so they we invented algebra. You know, and they 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 can for some reason they can never just state reality. Why? Because given the number of people they have in the world and the resources they've had, they should be making a, a, a much greater contribution than they are. But it's always, all their contribution is always suffocated by, it's not, matter of fact, that's something I'm going to be talking about uh, with J. Warner Wallace tomorrow, uh, because we're talking about the Christian contribution to education and science. And I was talking to Jay on the phone and he, and he was, uh, we, we were talking about why, you had this burst of philosophy in Islam and you had this burst of science in Islam, but then it just died, right? It, it, it flourished for a while and it died. And so the question was, was why? And uh, basically as Islam expands and takes over other people's stuff, things can flourish for a little while, but Islam just always suffocates it. It always suffocates it. And it, yeah, it, it, it can never, it can never last. Um, Yosho Frag says, uh, Hi, David and Sam. How much of the Islamic community holds the opinion that the Quran can only be read in Arabic? Is there a general consensus among the leaders? That's easy to answer. The Quran itself says it's in Arabic, chapter 43, verses 3 and 4. So when you say how much of it, you do have Muslims who are, I don't want to use the term, but like Protestant Muslims and Quran only Muslims who would say pretty much, no, the Quran is still the Quran in any language provided it's translated correctly, but the Quran itself says it's in Arabic, and classically, historically, Muslim scholars are pretty much unanimous, the Quran is only the Quran in Arabic. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's just a majority position, mm -hmm. historically, so there's no yeah. denying that. As far, yeah, as far as, uh, as far as this being an issue, notice, Sam, it, it only really comes up as a serious issue when you criticize Islam. And then suddenly, right. oh, it can only be understood in Arabic. Uh, but, uh, Yosho, I would encourage you to watch my video, Why the Quran Was Revealed in Arabic. Because this position on, on God's you know final revelation being revealed in Arabic is a massive problem for Islam once you once you find out why the Quran is revealed in Arabic. Because the, 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 that actual video fits in perfectly with what we're talking about right here. The actual position of the Quran on why the Quran was revealed in Arabic goes something like this. Again, you can watch my video, Why the Quran Was Revealed in Arabic, and it will go into much more detail and give you all the verses and so on. But the, the basic position is Allah sent prophets into every place in the world, and they brought their messages, 
and you've got books in different places in the world for different groups. Every group had received their revelation except the Arabs. And so the reason Muhammad is the seal of the prophets is he's just last, right? These are the last people to get their book. So that's revealed. And now once that's revealed, then everyone's got their book. The reason Allah had to reveal a book in Arabic was that he, underst he understood that if he didn't reveal a book in Arabic, the Arabs would be able to stand up on the judgment day and say, hey, every other group had a book. We didn't get one. If we had had a book, if we'd had a book like the Jews, we'd have been better servants of God than them. And Allah would just have no response for that. So he had to give the Arabs a book in Arabic as well. But notice, the position of the Quran is the Arabs need a book in Arabic because it, it makes no sense for them to, to, to read a book in a different language or to have to go out and under, read a, learn a different language to learn a book. So you can't expect people to do that. There's too many people. Not everyone's going to go learn you know, other languages to go read the books of the Jews or the books of the Christians, right? So they need a book in their own language so that they can understand it and so that they don't have to go out and learn another language, and so that they don't have to rely on other people like Jews or Christians to just tell them what it says, right? Because, again, according to the Quran, Jews and Christians are constantly twisting the meaning of these things, right? So you can't trust them. That's why the Arabs needed a revelation in their own language. Now, if you get your mind around that, you see why the Islamic position is absolutely serious. I mean, absolutely silly, right? Yeah. Yeah, this is exactly. serious stuff. This is bad stuff, right? If the Quran is only revealed in Arabic because Arabs need a revelation in their own language, what sense does it make for Muslims to now say, well, everyone needs to uh, just read the Quran in Arabic and you can't understand the book without learning this other language or listening to other people, listening to Muslims tell you what it means. That was the entire reason the Quran was revealed in the first place was to avoid that. And what... <laughs> What we're, what the, what Allah was trying to avoid is now what Muslims tell us is, is the, the entire situation and the only way you can hear from God. Amazing, amazing stuff. All right, and Basic says, uh, Jesus is Lord. Amen, he is. All right, so The Sam, living, risen Lord of glory, Sam, almighty Son of God, we love you. Go ahead. Sam, we keep going way, 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 way longer yeah, than, yeah, than yeah, I want. I but we only got one more. We got one more, right? Yes. I don't even, Again, I don't even remember what it is. Yeah, we don't know. I yeah. hope I hope this one I hope this one shakes you to your core. Surprise. All right. Oh. <laughs> never, mi never mind, Sam. What it's, is it? It's, it's, one, it, it, it's both. It, we've covered both of these. Okay. Yeah, so, so we've looped back around. Oof. It says, okay. uh, no, but yeah, look, look, look at how this starts off, ladies and gentlemen. Act 17, apologetics. Will you bow to Allah now? So here we have Al Imran, verse 78. And Surah 3, okay, verse 78. Yeah. And indeed, there is among them a party who alter the scripture with their tongues. So you may think it is from the scripture, but it is not from the scripture. And they say this is from Allah, but it is not from Allah. And they speak untruth about Allah while they know. Notice that, that part, while they know. They know that they're lying. They know that they're misrepresenting it. That only makes sense if they already have the reliable scripture. All they're doing here yeah. is misrepresenting it with their tongues. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been through all this, so this is just review. But think about, and keep in mind, these are the same ones that Adnan Rashid quoted at the end of his video to show That's right. that the Quran does affirm the categorical corruption of the earlier scriptures. And what's it say? There are people who alter the scripture with their tongues. Muslims of the world, are there people who, uh, who misrepresent the Quran with their tongues? Yes, of course there are. So according to your own apologists... According to your own apologist, the Quran has been corrupted. Suddenly, your your ability to think clearly will kick in. Your rationality will kick yeah. in, and you will say, "Wait a minute! Someone corrupting something with their mouths does nothing to change the scripture." And you'd be right. You'd be right. But it's too late now. You've already laid this down as a rule, and that's why you're about to see a never-ending series of videos showing all the different ways that your apologists have just proven that your scripture is corrupted. And you'll scream, and you'll whine, and you'll say, no, 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 that can't possibly mean that our scripture has been corrupted. But it's too late. Your apologists, your YouTubers, your scholars have laid down the rule, and now you're stuck with it. And you could saw my head off. I am not letting you back off of this. Amen. And then, of course, we have Surat al-Baqarah, verse 79. Amen. So woe to those who write the scripture with their own words, then say, this is from Allah, in order to exchange it for a small price. Woe to them for what their hands have written, and woe to them for what they earn. Sam went through 
a massive chunk of Sura 2 showing that this can't possibly, this can't possibly refer to the corruption of the text. This refers to someone writing something down and claiming that it is from God. It does not refer to the corruption of the Torah. It certainly doesn't refer to the corruption of the gospel because the entire this entire section is about Jews. So you have here, it doesn't even tell what they're writing. It just says someone's writing something and saying that it's from God. Even if you go back to the to the Muslim commentaries, they say this referred to uh, someone who was trying to write a false description about Muhammad to keep people off the track, did it for money. How could this possibly refer to the corruption of the Torah, which existed around the world and uh, was already in places where it was buried and wasn't discovered until later? There's no way this could possibly refer to the corruption of the Torah, let alone the gospel, because the gospel isn't even being mentioned. And if Muslims did take this seriously, as proof of corruption, then we would have to say that if I write something right now and I say this is from the Quran, that would mean that the Quran has been corrupted. But if I were to say that, once again, suddenly the reasoning ability of Muslims would turn on and they would recognize, wait a minute, someone saying this is from the Quran does not corrupt the Quran at all. But I won't let you get away with it. You're stuck with it. You have affirmed right. the corruption <clears throat> of the Quran with both of these verses and once again, you can saw my head off. I'm not letting you back off these. You have proven the corruption of the Quran according to your own words over and over and over again. And guess what? That's part of the reason I did it because I knew you would do this. I knew you would burn your entire apologetics <laughs> kingdom to it's the over. ground in it's order over. to in order to answer me. It's all over. It's a yes. joke. This is the best you've got. You have nothing else. You cannot you cannot show us one unequivocal verse and here you are you've got muslims quoting these verses which can't possibly refer to the corruption of the gospel and they're saying david we've refuted you are you ready to convert what yeah. an absolute joke sam and by the way david you have a friend here a muslim that you maybe want to explain to him how he just destroyed muhammad and the Quran again oh, yeah? and he has to come up with a new shahada i'll, I'll, I'll tell you what the shahada should be sayyid uh, sayyid uh, rayyid sayyid rayyid listen your new shahada should be, there is no God but Allah, and Bart Ehrman is his messenger. <laughs> he you went know with why? Bart Ehrman? <laughs> yeah, because look what he quoted. I saved it. Oh, my goodness. It's, it's, Bart Ehrman is a scholar, and you guys are all not so. I will take Bart's, Bart's word for it than over yourself, because he says the Bible's full of contradictions. David, remember, I'm not intelligent. I don't think logically. Can you help me and him see that if Bart Ehrman is right, the Bible's full of contradictions, so it's corrupted? How this destroys Muhammad and shows the Quran is a lie, and why then he should not be a Muslim but follow Bart Ehrman and burn incense to Bart Ehrman's pictures and books? Yeah, uh, if if Said here takes Bart Ehrman even remotely seriously, even even remotely seriously, then he has to reject Islam. Uh, uh, Allah says that Jesus wasn't killed, wasn't crucified. Bart Ehrman says that Jesus' death by crucifixion is one of the best established facts of history. So. If Bart Ehrman is correct, then the Quran is false. Moreover, we've shown repeatedly that the Quran affirms the inspiration and the preservation and the authority of the gospel. Said says, but Bart Ehrman says the gospel contains contradictions. Okay, so Allah affirms something as the inspired, preserved, authoritative word of God that contains contradictions. So what does that mean? Well, if Bart Ehrman is your authority, then it means, once again, that the Quran is wrong, that Allah is wrong. If Allah is wrong, then obviously Muhammad's a false prophet. And so Said has just proven that Allah is a false god and that Muhammad is a false prophet and that the Quran is a false book filled with lies. We could continue because, you know, I'm, I'm sure Said wants to go, ah, but Bart Ehrman talks about textual variants and so on. Yeah, Bart Ehrman also says that uh, that if Muslims would actually do the research, they'd see that they have the, the same the same issue. Namely, anytime you have a book that's copied by human beings, you're going to have those kinds of things. And when Bart Ehrman was asked why he doesn't write something about the textual history of the Quran the way he does yeah. about the Bible, he said, yeah, I, when I stop valuing my life, I'll do that. In other words, knowing that if he were to write that about the Quran, he knows Muslims would hunt him down and kill him. This is your this is the authority you're bringing to a side. Come on, this and, is, and, and Sam, this is right after I go through what a joke Islamic apologetics is, and here's a just proving us right again. My goodness! But this is the surprise now, David. I'm gonna surprise you, David. Surprise, guys. Here's my shahada. Here's my shahada. 
There is no God but the flying spaghetti monster, and Bart Ehrman is his messenger. Takbir! Ehrman Akbar! Ehrman! That's the shot. You guys convinced me. Bart Ehrman. I am now an Ermanite. I am an Ermanite, and all of you need to be Erm... Ermanians. Ermanians, not Muslim. Thank you, Bart Ehrman. You are a gift from the spaghetti monster to mankind. Where have you been all these centuries? Why did the spaghetti monster send you so late in time? There is no God but the spaghetti monster, and Ermin is his messenger. Ermin lives! <laughs> all right, there you go. All right, Sam. Well, guys, we're uh, we're all done here. Sam, you did uh, you did promise people a uh, halal hogan. Right. Okay, I'm gonna do it. Guys, ready? Guys, like I said, <clears throat> I'm not as young as I used to be. I'm gonna be 48 if God is pleased, and my voice is not as strong as it used to be. And by the way, they made a suggestion, David. Get a hold of Pastor Joe and do a show with him, Joseph. Hey, praise the Lord! <laughs> They want you to do one. Someone said, hey, find what? him. Pastor, Pastor Joseph. Joseph. Yeah, they were mentioning him. Say, find him and get him on the show if you can. Praise right? the Lord. Ah, Praise ah, the Lord. Here we are. We're gathered together here. I got Sam Shaboon and Brother David. Ah, ah, ah. If the king ain't on it, the king ain't in it. Am I right? Ah, ah. <laughs> but now I'm going to do Halal Hogan. So, guys, before I do it, pray for David and I. Pray for his spouse, his children, my children. Pray for the Lord to give us the health we need to glorify him, the holiness to delight his heart, and the Lord Jesus just watch over our families and provide. Because I'm letting you know, ever since Easter Sunday, when David then announced to me he wanted to do this, I've been attacked more, most viciously in these past two weeks, over a week and a half, than I've been in the last six months. And I know why, because when David decides to do something by the grace of God, Satan comes attacking him and anyone that works with him. So pray for him. Adam Coleman, what do you mean? John, what do you mean? McRae, vocab, pray for us. We need to be covered. And with that said, <clears throat> listen, brother, let me tell you something, man. When you keep telling me, brother, that the Quran doesn't mean what it says, I'm a little confused, bro. You know why? Because I've been told that Muhammad was the most eloquent of all the messengers. But when he says black, you say it's white. And brother, that's really confusing me. And I don't know what to do because you know what? Sharia mania ain't having it because the Quran doesn't say what it means until Adnan Rashid comes and tells me what it means. And I'm losing it, brother. Adnan, what you telling me, brother, that Muhammad wasn't the greatest communicator and that Allah waited for you, then my new shahada is, there is no God but Allah, and Adnan is his messenger. <laughs> That's pretty good, Sam. <laughs> hey, one of the things we got to do is uh, I had you a custom-made uh, Halal Hogan uh, thalb, but it's made with the Hogan colors and stuff, and uh, we got to record a whole series of videos with the Halal Hogan breaking stuff down. All right. All right. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us, especially for those of you who made it almost the three hours that we've been going. But, guys, we, we went through all the main ones. I'll probably be making separate videos on all of these because this is fun, fun stuff. Watching Muslim apologists destroy, I mean, absolutely destroy their own book in order to defend their own book. It's it's absolutely amazing. Uh, but I, Lord willing, I will be back tomorrow night, 8 o'clock p.m., with... J. Warner Wallace, cold case detective. And we'll be talking about uh, the impact of Christianity on science and education. And since uh, since I deal with a lot of Islam, probably be talking about the Islamic contribution as well. All right. See you all there.